Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. How we doing? Oh, Doc's got a stanker going on oh, down in the no, basement. No. Down there in the basement at Staples, he got a stanker going on. Okay, you see this? Yeah, oh, there we go. Oh, we saw. All of a sudden, the team in the basement's about to be up there in those box suites ruling Staples. What? Did you tonight. see? Tonight. Did you see mm, what tonight. happened? What is tonight? I don't know. They you play know, another G League team. Oh, so the Pelicans are the G League team. Yeah. Oh, now. that's a, they feel like it. Yeah. Oh, uh, harsh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, you guess what? We're going to play a G League team mm. on Christmas Day. No, I can't yeah, wait. Yeah, well, guess Day. what? Uh-huh. Santa's bringing LeBron. <laughs> Kawhi and PG uh-huh. and Trez and Sweet Lou. That's all right. I saw that jersey you posted Woo-hoo. on social media. I follow you, Skip. I well, know you, you don't follow us. Well, you, but. you missed it the day I actually had it here on set. Oh, yeah. Well, geez. You were, you were at one of those big one of those games, games. Yep. Friday days. Let, I miss all the good it. stuff. Huh? Let me borrow the jersey. What are you going to do with it? Let me borrow it. I just want to borrow it. You just want to burn it, borrow it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. Get some brother, yeah, brother. Here Another we go. one. I love it. We got two. We have a great show today. Have Kawhi's Clippers prove they are the best <sighs> defensive no. team uh, in the uh, NBA? And is Tom uh, Brady admitting that his age is finally <laughs> starting to show? <laughs> Talk Cowboys, though, shall we? We're going to start there. Yesterday, Jerry Jones said that he would not be making any coaching changes midseason, but Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk seems to think that could change. Florio reports that if the Cowboys were to lose on Thanksgiving to the Bills, Jerry could fire Jason Garrett as soon as Friday. Mm. Wow. All right, Shannon, can you see this happening? No. Um, I, I can't see it happening. Um... Because I, I, for me, what has changed? I mean, why was this such a grunt wrenching and a heartbreaking loss? Uh, you lost to a team that's going to probably be in the playoffs. Did you think about firing them when you lost to the Saints? That's a playoff team. What about the Packers, Skip? Did you think about? Did you Jerry think about firing them after they lost to the Packers? Okay, what about the Vikes? Oh no, because this is what we see and what we've seen from the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Teams that are playoff bound or look to be playoff bound, they lose to. Mm. Teams that are have that's nowhere close to making the playoffs, mm-hmm. they win. So I'm trying to figure out why was Jerry so heartbroken? You know why? Because he rides the emotional roller coaster mm. like a fan does. They win th- open the season three and oh, mm. Super Bowl bound. I can tell you now, I've been around some teams, and this is one of the this team has as much talent. That's what he said. Skip like, woo! Woo! Yep. We got that. We got Super Bowl, Miami. Mm-hmm. Here we come. Yep. Uh, Disputed to be there right there on that field. You Can't see, wait. You said all that. Now we'll all be sudden, there. I don't know if the Cowboys are going to be Now all of a sudden, Skip, you're six and five. Huh? Oh, you got all this plus, uh, uh, plus minus differential points, score points allowed. You got the quarterback with QBR and passing mm-hmm. yard, yada, yada, yada. And you're six and five. That's what you are. Mm-hmm. And Jerry had all these expect. It's all Jerry's fault. Yeah. Because, look, if you're a player in that locker room, if you've been around the game of football for an extended period of time, you understand that winning in the NFL is hard. But it's only Jerry Jones and the delusional Cowboys fans that actually think every year they're going to and win the Super Bowl, especially after they win a few games. Woo, we Super Bowl bow. Mm. Hey, eat it, Shannon Sharp. Eat it. Cowboys going to the Super Bowl. How you like that? Mm. I love it because I'll be there, mm. but you won't. Cowboys going to the Super Bowl, Skip. They are but not without a ticket. Mm. So, I don't know what to tell you. He's not, <laughs> he's not firing Jason Garrett, Skip, because you know why? Even if they lose uh, to Buffalo and the Eagles win, they're still in first place in the division mm. by what? They beat the Eagles head-to-head. I do not believe he's going to fire Jason Garrett because he should have fired him. At the begin- he should have fired him once he stepped to that podium, Skip, at the Combine. And he says, I am not going to extend Jason Garrett. And owners do a lot. They always try not to make their coach a lame duck. They normally give him one extra year, even if they do fire him after the year, because they don't want him to be a lame duck. That's what Jason Garrett was. Jason Garrett was, from the moment Jared uttered those words, I'm not extending Jason Mm -hmm. Garrett. He was coaching for his job. Mm -hmm. He was on the hot seat. You know that. Everybody knows that. The seat has maybe gotten hotter, but. He's not firing him. Mm. That's his guy. Mm. That's his guy. Besides, uh, who else is going to let him have control to come in there and go and come if he please and talk to whoever he want to? Mm. Nobody but Jason. So he ain't mm. going nowhere. Mm. I know as much, much to your chagrin, I know mm. you hate that. You want him up out of there, but he's mm. not. Red, stay. Mm. Fight for your job, Red. Mm. 
Players sure aren't going to fight. No, 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 don't worry about all that. <laughs> there you go. Okay, as usual, you got your facts right, but your conclusion is dead wrong. You have missed the point, missed the boat, <laughs> missed the bottom line. I have talked about Jason Garrett so long on national television, I've, I've reached Jason Garrett burnout. Mm. I have wrestled with him. I, I have tried to cope with him for so long, I, I am mentally and physically drained from Jason <laughs> Garrett syndrome. I covered Jason Garrett when he was the backup quarterback to Troy Aikman. I feel like I know him fairly well. I know what he is, and I know, more important, what he is not. Just for the record, this is not new to me. You're using 2020 hindsight. I was ahead of this curve because I watched Jason Garrett attempt to head coach this team for two years, and they were long years. And I'm talking about 2011 and 2012. We're going way back into the dark ages. Oh, you're talking about the 500. Yeah, right? and I'm talking about 8-8 eight and 8-8, eight and, eight and eight, <laughs> which ultimately was followed by 8-8. 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 
the Zeke suspension. Then 2018 happened. I'm sorry, I missed 2016. That was another one, another turnaround year. 13 and 3. Yeah. And what happened? Out of heaven, Dak Prescott fell into their lap. And Zeke. And Zeke. And they were extraordinary as rookies. They both had huge plays, game after game after game. Dak made big plays. Zeke made big plays. And it carried them, the momentum of those two kids playing way above their maturity level, led them to a playoff game in which they fell woefully behind, thanks to Jason Garrett not motivating his football team. And they were down, what, 28 to 3 in that? No, 21 to 3 in that game. And they came back to 31 all and lost 34 to 31. The point was, every other year, the talent has carried Jason Garrett. And again, he won't get in the way of great talent, which is great. He has little to no ego. But when the talent doesn't start making the plays that win the games, see, this year, he, he can't fix it. He can't re-motivate it because what, what have we seen this year? We've seen them fall behind out of the gate eight of 11 times. That's on the head coach. And yet the, the head coach, he speaks in platitudes. He speaks in cliches. If you watched any part of that documentary that they did in 2017 for Amazon, All or Nothing, they showed long meetings. It just went on forever in which Jason just – talk, 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 talked to the whole group in the big meeting theater. Mm -hmm. And you could see the guys and they're losing train of thought and they're looking this way and they're looking that way because they just tune out Jason Garrett. Again, a nice guy who can finish last, as the old cliche goes, because he can't do anything to fix a situation that is starting to teeter and go south. So now I'm back to Mike Florio. And I do respect his insight into this. And I'm sure he's heard from his sources that Jerry is on the verge. And what did I tell you yesterday after I heard Jerry's remarks on his radio show? We did it right off the top of the show after Jerry had spoken on his, we reacted immediately. That was different. That was angry Jerry. What this team knows is its owner has a big temper and it's close to being lost. And when he loses his temper, see Jimmy Johnson back in 1993 after the 93 season, he is capable of firing somebody at the drop of a ref's hanky. You know, like it, it, can, it, it can just go boom, where he just goes quickly. He's got one of those tempers. It's a runaway temper you cannot stop. And Mike Florio knows that the Jerry we saw right after the game in New England, that's scary Jerry. And is he on the verge of doing something dramatic? Yes. But here's my final takeaway from this whole scenario. I don't want to hear about Friday could be the end of Jason Garrett. Man, they ain't gonna fire the man okay. today, Skip. Stop. Okay, but but I don't want to hear Friday because Friday is too late to me. This to me, Buffalo on Thanksgiving, in, it's the biggest stage in the sport. This this game annually rates the highest mm -hmm. of the whole year, except for big playoff games or Super Bowl, obviously. Right. But this is the regular season game. It's a turning point for my football team because if my team loses to eight and three Buffalo, who's really good on defense, not so much on offense. But if you lose to Buffalo, if Cole Beasley returns to Jerry World him, and Cole. lights him up, yeah, because he had what seven catches for seventy-six yards. And a tub. Yeah, yeah, he's been really good. He's been on a little bit of a quiet yeah. roll, right? If that happens, this team will be psychologically dead in the water because you can't keep losing close games and dredge it back up for a trip to Chicago a week from Thursday on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. You can't dredge it back up for the Rams coming, as bad as the Rams have been, to Jerry World the 10 days later. And then you can't dredge it back up for going to Philadelphia the week after that. It's, it's, it's going to come as a collision where it's, it's going to go one way or the other on Thursday afternoon. Either they're going to take off, as Stephen Jones said on his radio show, we need to make a run. Well, they're highly capable. They're, they're all those things you said about you were being sarcastic. They're extremely talented. In point differential, this team ranks fourth in the league. That's extraordinary because the teams above them are San Francisco and, the, and uh, New England and, the and Baltimore. And all of a sudden, Dallas is fourth in point differential. Why is that? Because they're in every game, but they're six and five because they keep barely losing too many games. But Skip, you, you said something interesting. You said... They go 12 and 4, they go 13 and 3, and they make the playoffs. You say the talent can win the game. Yep. You didn't mention anything about Jason Garrett. No, but the I, moment I told they you lose. He doesn't get in the way. But, okay. He's good. What do I call him? Okay. Coach Clap. So, well, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. 
If he doesn't get in the way, why are you blaming him when they lose? He's not in the way. Okay, but if you start losing close games, you need somebody to reunite and detonate the locker room. You need an igniter. You need that somebody that, that they listen to. That's what that. He's okay. a leader. Okay. He's a un, he you leader. tell me the, he's the unquestioned leader of that team. Okay. Rally your troops. Okay, but the leader, if you're a player, then you have to go out and do it. You yes. have to lead by example exactly. by making plays. And I told you the last two days on this show, he hasn't made enough plays that made differences. I've been trying to tell and, you that. And right now, the Eagles have allowed Jason Garrett to keep his job because yeah. the Eagles are even worse worse, your Eagles are even worse than the Cowboys yes. have been because they're losing badly. They're, they're losing games in, in fashions where you say, they just look pathetic. Oh. The Cowboys don't look pathetic. They haven't looked pathetic one time all year. They have not been blown out. They didn't lose 45 to 6 to the Ravens. They didn't lose as the Rams did at home, what was it, 55 to something to Jameis and company. Right. They haven't had a game like that. So, again, the New England game, you say, well, how could you say fire Jason off the New England game? Well, they, they actually covered the spread at New England, right? They were, Jerry don't care nothing about no spread. Okay, okay but six and a half point favorites, and it was 13 to nine. But here's what I care about. How did it look to you? I know how it looked to Jerry, like we got out coached. Well, how did the first yeah. half look against the Jets? Against the Packers. Okay, thank you. Those are fireable offenses. Okay, fireable, he, fireable, okay, fireable. But he didn't fire okay, him. Okay, over, yep. over time, though, you, you, you keep saying it'll turn around next week. It'll turn around next week. Well, they're still alive and afloat this late in the season because of the woeful beagles. The eagles, eagles. are beagles. They're beagles. Yeah. And, and, again, it's allowing Dallas to say, okay, we still got a chance. Help me out. What, what if Dallas catches fire on Thursday? What, what if they beat Buffalo badly? What if they take off? Could, could they make a run? Sure they could because I think you agree with me. This is a really talented group, yeah, right? Like but here's the thing, Skip. Jerry is insane because you keep telling me you know what Jason Garrett is. Mm -hmm. You know what he isn't. You've seen enough mm -hmm. to know what Jason Garrett is. Correct. For a long, so long it's, time. So it's Jerry's fault because Jerry is insane mm -hmm. because it's doing something over and over and hoping for a different result. That's true. He's had his head coach for seven years. No, nope, so I agree. So if, if you know, don't you think Jerry should know what Jason Garrett is? Yeah. He knows. But, but he, also, oh, he also knows he gets along great with him. And he knows that oh. they have great rapport because Jason will do what he says. And there you go. Okay, thank you. And as long as it works with every other year division championship, Jerry's going to hang in and hang on. But I do believe that Jerry was sort of seeing what I saw the whole offseason. I know Jenny kept asking me, boy, you're sure gung-ho about your team. You're going way out on the limb, aren't you? This team is loaded. And once they got Zeke back in the fold yeah. out of Cabo, I thought, here we go. It's right on the verge when you won one playoff game last year and played reasonably well in the next playoff game at the Rams. You lost 30 to 22. It was a one score game. It's time for the team to take another maturity step and, I don't know, but get to the Super Bowl. You know, that's the biggest, the biggest misconception is okay, we were right there. Okay, we lost the play, no, we went to the playoffs a couple of years ago. We lost in the first round. Okay, we come back, we win a playoff game. So the next step, next progression is people automatically think, well, we're going to the NFC Championship game. Are we taking that next step going to the Super Bowl? It doesn't work like okay, that. Okay, but it can. I've seen it happen yes. before where young players just grew into it. How many times have you seen it happen for the Cowboys? Well, I'm just saying this is a new group of Cowboys because you had a young quarterback and a young running back yeah. and a still a fairly young offensive line. All I know is, is that Jerry, once Jimmy hadn't got those players, uh, yeah, they won a Super Bowl, but look what he had. If I'm not mistaken, Troy's in the hall, mm -hmm. Emmitt's in the hall, mm -hmm. Michael's in the hall, Larry Allen's in the hall, Charles Haley's mm -hmm. in the hall, Deion said, well, if you got six of your 22 starters in the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. you better get something out of that deal. Darren Woodson, he, borderline. He, yes, and he's, yes, he's there. yes. So, yep. so you can understand. Mm -hmm. And when, Jer Skip, when Jerry says, and this is why I was always cautious to when you compare teams, Skip, you can try to compare, te compare the teams to a team that's already won Super Bowls. That's won three, because that, that core won three Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. And for Jerry to say, and Jerry was there, man, this team has as much talent as those Super Bowl teams. Skip, you raise the expectations of what people expect this team to be. So you basically say, hold on. He had Dion and Michael and Troy and Emmett and Larry Allen and Charles Haley. And he's saying this team is as talented as those teams. Those teams won Super Bowls. So not everybody expected. You heard what Jerry said? We're going to the Super Bowl. 
Uh, no, you're not. Okay, he's seeing triplets, possible Troy, Emmett, Michael, three players now mm -hmm. because that quarterback, running back, and receiver can play up to those levels. Are they made of the, well, the same you, stuff? Hold on. You just told me you was out on Amari. Well, you said he ain't made up the stuff of a have, Michael. Have you seen him play to that level? Oh, yes. What? Yes. Okay. I'm down on him after one game, but it was it was a really bad game. Uh, that would not have happened to Michael Irvin. Of course not. Okay. All right. So, will he bounce back? Because he's got a pretty tough assignment. Uh, he does. Tredavious Tomorrow. White is yeah. really good. Hell, Troy, yep. and, and Troy was throwing dimes on mm -hmm. folks. Well, Dak has been throwing dimes no, all year. You just told me yep. when he needed to make a play, and I keep using the analogy money. What good is money if you can't spend it when you need it? Okay. What good is all those numbers when you need a play, he can't give it to you? He came in as the hottest quarterback in the league. And left frigid. The football. And he was colder than when mm -hmm. Foxborough when he yep. left. It was rainy. It was Not cold. What? It was rainy. No tubs. I -I -T. Okay, so the point is this. If I were Jerry, and I told you this yesterday, I've tweeted this, I, I would have taken 24 hours. I would have gotten up on Monday and I said, that's enough because I have a chance to detonate my, my whole locker room and my, my team. I can relaunch this season by elevating Chris Richard. I think he's going to make a fine head coach. I don't know that for sure, but he is head coaching material. He is the co-defensive coordinator, so it wouldn't tear up your defensive no. strategy. You could just let Rod Marinelli take more over the defense. Chris could still have his hand in defense and let go of Jason Garrett nope. and hope that that relaunched your whole season because it's right there on a silver platter for you to take off because Philly hasn't taken off. It's as simple as that. If you win the division, you're in the Super Bowl tournament. Am I right? Oh, you, Gotta you, get you're in. You're absolutely right. Yep. But, all we, but Philly's like, all we need to do is stay close. Because I already know they're going to crash and burn at the okay. end. What we call the Dallas Cowboys. We already yep. know they're going to have an accident before they get to the finish line. Okay. And that's when we pass them. Well, that's history. You're just saying, well, that's who they always are. But this team is different. But that's what you just this told quarterback has been different. No, he hasn't. And I believe if you, if you could shake up the locker room, which is in dire need of a shakeup, because it doesn't have a voice it fears. Hmm. Dak, Cor uh, Dak Prescott can't cut people, Jason Garrett would have the capacity to be a Jimmy Johnson and say, I cut you. I, I'm gonna... You know he can't okay. cut anybody. Jerry yeah. can. All right. And that's, the, that's what Jerry loves about Jason Garrett because he has total control where he had, he had some control, but he wasn't cutting nobody over Jimmy. Mm. That was Jimmy's pur purview. Like he, the word he likes to use, mm. purview. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was Jimmy domain, Skip. Well, I wish it were still Jason's domain, but it's not, right. and he has run his course. No, he hasn't. He, he, his cliches are falling on deaf ears. Steady. Yep. Steady, Skip. Okay, so if Mike Florio is right, if they lose to Buffalo and he fires Jason on Friday, trust me, it's too the, late. You, doesn't matter what yep. happens. You're not making yep. the playoffs, so yep. it doesn't matter what yep. he does. It's yep. over for you. you. You better hope they don't beat Buffalo, because if they do, they're just going to take off. Oh, yep. so, even, so if they so beat tomorrow. Buffalo and keep Jason, they're going to mm -hmm. take off. Could be. If, if, again, it's all about the talent. If the talent, if it, it's a, it's a one play year for Dallas. If they make one big late play, it's just going to ignite the whole football team. Mm -hmm. It ignited all last year because they did nothing but make big plays exactly. late. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that had nothing to do with Jason Garrett. Uh, see, but now all the losing has everything to do with Jason Garrett. Jason Garrett coaches not to lose. Right. He's not going to make a big. And Jack Prescott plays too. not to lose. Okay. And considering the drama not. of this and Jason Garrett in the news, that might be a bit distracting. Yeah. Into this week, Jerry I feel like it's the news everywhere. Mm. And a Bills team that's won three of their last four. Let's go, Buffalo. Mm. Uh, their record speaks for itself. I'll, I'll bet a case on it Let's right now. Let's go, Buffalo. Yeah. Shall we? I'm a little hanging bit in with my now. team. A little bit softer now. Yeah. yeah. One case. Mm. <laughs> Done deal. Man, I let, let me sleep on it. Let me see how sleep I feel in the morning. Yeah, you know. We're going to be here tomorrow. So, yeah, yeah, we will here tomorrow. Yeah, you got time. You got time. All right, all right. It's been said. But, guys, we're talking about the Clippers <laughs> next. Oh. Are they actually better defensively than the Lakers? Mm -hmm. I think that'll be a good discussion mm -hmm. next. Don't forget, you can check us out every day on the Fox Sports Channel on Sirius XM. We'll be right back. No mercy. Start your Thanksgiving with us tomorrow morning. We will preview the Cowboys' annual Thanksgiving game, plus all the other NFL games that day. It's going to be fun, so catch us Thanksgiving morning tomorrow at 9.30 Eastern. Should be a good one. Wonderful food for, for us in the morning. 
How about this, though? The Clippers' defense shut down the Mavericks' European duo of Kristaps Porzingis and Luka Doncic last night. L.A. held the two Dallas Stars to a combined 37 points on 8 of 27 shooting and went on to win 114-99. After the game, Paul George said the Clippers' defense has been getting better every game and is, quote, scary. Mm. So, Skip, did the Clippers prove last night that they are the best defensive team in the NBA? Aha! Uh-huh. So... What have I been hearing lately from the Los Angeles Lakers? I, I've what? been hearing We've... them saying or crowing or gloating, we're the best defensive team in the NBA, right? And by the way, the stats have been backing them up. Right now, they remain number one in defensive efficiency, the Lakers do. Okay, then, so what's the debate? Last night in Dallas against the quote-unquote next Larry Bird yeah. that you love. <laughs> yeah, the love early that. runaway MVP, Luka Doncic. <laughs> Struggled. The Clippers made a huge statement. They said, watch this. They said, when it comes to defense, we are in a league of our own. Clearly, utterly, hands down, the Clippers proved last night in Dallas They are easily the best defensive team in the National Basketball Association because they were up against a team that in the modern era has put up numbers we've never seen before, albeit early in the season. They were up against the best offense in the NBA, one that's on a historic pace we've never seen before. And what did they do? The Clippers held that offense to 99 points at home. 99, and they were lucky to get to 99 because their shock troops came in in garbage time and got them barely up to 99. The Clippers bullied the Mavericks in their own building. Mm. The Clippers beat them up and beat them down. It was, Lord have mercy, it was, to quote our man Lil Wayne, no mercy. (laughs) It was Luka Doncic. Not knowing what had hit him upside the head, because he shot 4 of 14 from the field. He was 0 for 8 from the three-point line. He had seven turnovers. And he was so beat up and beat down after the game that he ducked the media. He was gone before the media was allowed in the locker room. I'm not sure what that says about his basketball character. I don't love that. I don't know about you, but I don't think you can defend that. So, what happened? Well... Kawhi happened, and then Paul George happened, and Pat Bev happened, and Rodney Magruder was on him. He's just seeing bodies coming from everywhere. Mo Harkless took him for a little while. Long arms, big hands, deflections, turnovers, and, man, the claw was all over him and then all over Dallas. The claw just took over the game in the fourth quarter. He scored nine in the fourth. The game was over. 28 points in 28 minutes. The game was over. like that? The game was over, Skip. And what I loved was a quote from Rick Carlisle that I thought summed up the whole night, if we could see this, please. Rick Carlisle said, you have two wing players that are probably the most physical wing players and the most athletic wing players in the game. They are big, they are strong, and they are highly skilled. Mm. That's the bottom line to what happened to the Dallas Mavericks. Okay. Kawhi, Paul George. Okay. And then you throw in Sweet Lou and Montrez. Oh, that's a glow. Whoa. Whoa. Here we go. And in the end, as Jenny pointed out, Paul George said, offensively, we're still a work in progress, but defensively, scary. Yeah. Was it scary when James Harden mm. cooked them for the almost 40? Mm. When he cooked everybody, mm. Paul George, he got a three-point play, or almost a four-point play on Paul George and Pat Bell. I when Kawhi you, didn't want him. Kawhi said, I don't you, want any of that. No Paul George through training camp. No Kawhi yeah. through training camp. They're just figuring each other out. They've never played together except way back in AAU days. Nah, nobody about that. And so their combined scores in the last five games they played, or the five games they played together, 42, then 43, 44, and then last night, 54, up to 54 mm-hmm. together. Okay. Woo! Or whatever. Woo! <laughs> Shannon. Okay, Skip. Skip, okay, look. You want to say they're the best defensive team? Sure. But it's November. So what do we get for that? What do they get for that? Do they get a pen set? They get a basket of cheese and fruit? I'm, I'm trying to figure what do they get for being the best defensive team in November? They're striking fear in bronze. Heart. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think bronze lo- lost any sleep. 
because you know they got they can do nothing with Braun. Paul George has never been able to do anything with Braun. Kawhi has oh, never been able to do yes, anything with has. LeBron. No, he has yes, not. Yes, he has. And Mo Harkless does not want any day yeah. of my, But anyway, Skip, look. We knew they had guys that can defend. You got two extremely talented wing players, Kawhi and Paul George, long, athletic. Mm -hmm. Not only what makes them so spectacular is that normally guys that can defend like that don't have the offensive end. So you get no, you know, you're like, okay, LeBron's got to guard somebody. So it's not like you say, okay, put him on Paul George because Paul George is going to try and attack him. You can't put him on Kawhi because Kawhi's going to try and attack him. So, yes, they're, they're highly skilled. And then, and then you got Pat Bev, and then you got Trez, and then you got Harkless. Yes, they're talented on the defensive end. But we put them in the pick and roll. They can't do nothing with that pick and roll. Mm. They got nobody to do anything with AD. They don't have anything to do with Braun. We're getting quality contribution from KCP, who's playing unbelievable right now. The question is moving forward, and for long term, can Kuz be that consistent third option that we count in on a nightly basis? Because the thing that the Clippers have, they know on most nights, they're going to get somewhere between 30 and 40 points between Sweet Lou and Trez. Book it. They're getting 40 from those two guys. They're one in true bench players. They're one and two. Mm -hmm. Lou's averaging uh, uh, 20, and Trez had a little off night last night. It dipped. He was 18, so now he's 17.7. So they know on a nightly basis what they're going to get. The question is for us moving forward, can mm -hmm. we consistently get, say, 15, 18, maybe even 20 from Kuz? If that's the case, I don't even worry about that. I don't skip it. <laughs> Oh, be I sleep real good. Skip, you know, I went to bed. The game went on. I was like, come on, Luke. I thought Luke going to do something. He did shoot 16 free throws, so he was getting to the line. But his shot was off a little bit. And then I, I can understand. When you see Kawhi for five minutes, you see Paul George for five minutes, you got Pat Bell for two, you get Harkless, you get uh, Magruder. Yeah, they throw a lot of batters at him. And that's what they can do. They can frustrate you because everybody, every guy has his own defensive style of how they like to play. Pat Bell is going to get up into you. Mm. He going to chest bump your back off, sneak, sneak his hand in there. Kawhi is long. He's just going to spread out, spread, and just like, okay, what you got? Mm. Get around me if you can. Paul George's hands are as active as any hands we've seen in a very, very long time. Skip. <laughs> the thing I go back to, I got something hmm. that nobody mm. else has had mm. in 17 years. Vibranium. I got the GOAT. <laughs> I yeah. got GOAT James. Mm. And now I got AD. Mm. AD has been waiting for this moment. Skip, do you know how long he's waited for this? He waited to be on a national stage, the people to watch him, mm. he knows what this moment represents. He's going to take full advantage mm. of it. What happened on opening night, statement night? That was a long time yeah. Long time ago. Opening oh, night. Uh, uh, if, if Kawhi Fourth quarter. Tonight, if Kawhi played tonight, yeah. they've had to change the rules. Honestly, the NBA say, I, I need y'all to give play. me an account. For all these players that y'all said hurt, I need an account. There's it, no way he's going to play tonight. Oh! Yeah. He left it, it all well, yeah. out on the floor in Dallas. <laughs> Skip, yeah. good. Skip oh. you ought to be ashamed Making because you. Rules. this is what we know, Skip. If LeBron James was pulling this monkey biz mm. right here, mm. if LeBron James would play a game, miss two games, Skip, you'd be losing your mind because when LeBron was load managing the last, uh, uh, last year in Cleveland, the last couple of years, then he missed a game. LeBron, what about the fans that didn't have to see go only get one chance hmm. to see LeBron? I, I didn't that. say that. Yeah, you did. I never oh, said what no, about the fans. No, no, this I is what did. you did. <laughs> Michael Jordan. I definitely did. That, that guy, Michael Jordan, he had nine games in which he played all 82. Nine years. Nine, nine years. years. Yeah, nine I, years. I like players that play. But Jenny, did you know he had another year It wasn't until, 80. wait a second, LeBron, it wasn't until his 15th year in the league that he managed to play all 82. Where were you then, Shannon? Oh, hold, on, get, hold on. And now... He wants to play all 82. Mm. LeBron, you're doing this wrong. You need the low man. So which is it? Mm. Do you want him to play or do you not want him to play? Right now, I just want the Clippers to be the best they can <laughs> in May and June. That's, that's all, all that that's, really, really that, That's all I care about. Yep. That's all I care about. Yep. Still getting used but to But when it's all like said and done, I, mm. I, Skip, I never get tired of greatness. Mm. I want to watch greatness on a nightly basis if mm. I can. But somebody choose to take nights off. Well, watch greatness night to night that do not matter. <laughs> watch it They tonight. do not oh, matter. Oh, Hello, you just talk about it doesn't matter, and you just heat went on seven minutes. I timed it on this old panel right. Mm -hmm. Nice watch. Got it. Oh, yeah, I like yeah. those. Yeah, Skip, you just went on for five minutes about how great mm -hmm. defensive they were, but now you say it don't matter. They pick their spots to make statements. Opening night, they put it on <laughs> LeBron and AD in the fourth quarter. AD came up goose egg in the fourth quarter, oh, and LeBron managed a grand total of two points in the fourth quarter of a winnable game. 
at Staples, which is supposed to be their house, even though it was the Clippers' okay, home Okay, with your home game. Yep. Well, it's going to be our house on Christmas. Is it? We invite yep. you. We'll see. <laughs> we got I love what you. Kawhi said after the game. We came in here with a defensive mindset on the road. We wanted to do the best job we could do on Luka. He had been killing it lately. He got murdered last night okay. by this defense. Well, we're going to see Woo! what you got on Christmas. We're going to see what you got on Christmas, Skip yeah. Bayless. Yeah. Well, listen, defense travels. Defense, it's, it's all about how you care about whether you're going to play or not. If you, it's about want to. It's you're about, about desire. Travel. Yeah. Has anybody been able to travel better than LeBron James? Mm. He went MVPs in Miami and, and goes to finals oh. and wins. He went goes oh, back to Cleveland. Oh, you're talking about traveling. Yeah, he traveled. Picking up stakes and moving to another city. <laughs> no, that you're not talking about road skip, games. Skip. Ability, mm. greatness mm. travels. Mm. It pro it anything, uh, mm. errors. It didn't matter. I if promise you. Last night, LeBron was watching this going. And LeBron wasn't watching. Uh, uh, LeBron was. Gone. LeBron was having. Uh. Oh, Tuesday. Was he? Oh yeah, that's a long night of dinner, right? Bring me some more tacos. Yeah, yeah. 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 And we had a, uh, mm. and we had us some tequila. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he said wine. <laughs> Oh, we drank wine too. Yeah. He credits he, he wine. He credited his wine. Success. Yeah. Silver yeah, I don't know what kind I gotta of have wine some I've more been wine. He likes silver. I was oak. curious what he does. Oh, is yeah. that what he does? Yeah, I'm a silver oak opus yeah. woman. That's yeah. fancy. Yeah. Stuff. What, what does LeBron that. put in that wine? Yeah, no, 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 no. It has the uh, what? What do they call that? Uh, uh, the, the, there's something that's in the grapes that that that, that uh, makes your heart does your heart mm. good. Heart health. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. I don't know what it yeah. is. That's what it is, Skip, baby. Y'all been drinking. That's what it is. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have me a bottle tonight. Really? Like a couple whole bottle. couple hundred dollars a yep. bottle. How much? A couple hundred dollars. For silver oak? Yeah, over a hundred, and then Opus is like $300. Oh, really? So I got that old good stuff. That's what I be drinking. Uh -huh. Now, LeBron, LeBron sent me a bottle of Bordeaux. <laughs> mm. That's nice of him. Stop. Okay. And that rock child. So, I, I have to show this. Because uh, this you is, oh. it, it, it got Yo, so no. bad. What? It got so bad Yo. for poor next Larry Bird last night with about four and a half minutes left in the let game. Him off he easy. was so frustrated. He was so battered psychologically that can we see the last shot? It wasn't the last shot he took, but the this is his three. Up. Oh, yeah. Air ball with the claw going across his face. The claw. And he said, no moss. That's Ooh. a no moss shot. That's about as bad as it gets. That, that shot was not blocked. That was air ball. That was nothing but net, as in net before rim, right? But you know what LeBron do. LeBron, mm -hmm. anytime LeBron look at his hand, shake that uh, quick step back, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he missed all those threes. Yeah. Every single hey, attempt. Hey, you know LeBron. Single one. You know what? LeBron's thinking, oh, God. Christmas Day, I, I got Kawhi for a while, then I got Paul George, and then I got Pat Bev get, getting in, sticking in my craw, you know, and, just and guess irritating. What, and guess what LeBron going to tell yeah. them all? Mm -hmm. Just so I don't want anybody to feel like they didn't get a Christmas gift from mm -hmm. me, I'm going to give it to you first, mm -hmm. Paul George. I'm going to hit you for 10 in the first. Mm -hmm. Hey, Kawhi, come second quarter, I'm going to drop eight on you. Hey, Harkless and Magruder, I'm going to drop eight on you. You better be hey, careful. Hey, Pat Bev, you, you want some of this? Careful. See me. They're watching. Checkmate. 34 points, 11 rebounds, eight, uh, 12 assists, huh. a triple-double on Christmas Day, and a victory. Oh, uh, well, they're Staples watching. Staples is now sure. ruled by the defensive team that is the Clippers. First of all, first of all, let's, let's get this mm -hmm. straight. The Clippers are Cato Kalen. Mm. Okay, you live in the guest house. Uh, you out back. <laughs> this is not your residency. Oh, you're mm. paying rent. You listening, Clip? Yeah, I hope you're listening. You listening, Doc? Skip, you know, Skip. Doc may be requesting truth, a tape of that right now truth, so he truth, can show it to his truth team. Truth be told, yeah. the guy that I fear for the Clippers more than anybody is Sweet Lou Will. Mm. Mm. Sweet like Lou him. is the guy that I fear. Yeah. I'm Paul George. He's just the cherry on top. No, you stop yep. it. Yep. Stop it. Yep. He's a dish. Uh, well, you know, yeah. back to but back you, tonight you for the your, Clippers, you. so likely no Kawhi. But I ain't no, no, no likely. It was good to see you while I had no it. Wait, can we revisit likely this? Likely no Kawhi. Is Lucas still running away with MVP now? <laughs> I just want to know. We're going to have no, to reevaluate. Ain't nobody said don't run away. I said, hold on, but he's in the discussion. So. Oh, okay. Well, you, you can have a bad night, uh, but when you miss all your threes, that's not a good way to end it. Uh, and he, it's and not good to dodge the media either. Dodge the media. No mercy. Well, another guy who had a few things to say to the media, veteran tight end Jason Witten, is backing his owner. After Jerry Jones was critical of the Cowboys' performance and specifically the coaching staff following their 13-9 loss against the Patriots, Witten said he understood where Jerry was coming from and called his comments, quote, completely fair. So, Shannon, 
Are you surprised that Jason Witten would say this? Yes, I'm shocked. I have a simple philosophy. I believe if I'm a player in the locker room, either I keep my mouth shut or I'm backing my coach. You, hey, I understand that Jerry is frustrated. We're all frustrated. But there's no other coach I'd rather be and have be in this situation with hmm. than Jason Garrett. That's my coach. I'm backing my coach. Because you do realize, Jason, uh, uh, J uh, uh, Garrett says, you know what? We could have had a drive. But we had a guy that dropped a ball on key third down. Mm -hmm. That ain't none of my business. I don't even know why I brought that up. There have been some opportunities. You know what? He could have. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. You know, that one back. Yeah. There were two big drops. Oh, really? By number 82. Uh, and yep. You showed him one couple of weeks ago. He had it on third down. He yep. had to get the ball punched out of his hand. Mm -hmm. Because the way, I, the way I've approached this, Kip, um, for me, and on my watch in my 14 years, I've had two coaches dismissed from their jobs. Under my watch. Mm -hmm. That's my fault. Yep. I didn't perform like I was right. supposed to. Jason Garrett, you do know if they, uh, Jason, excuse me, Jason Witten, you do realize if they fire Jason Garrett, that means the players have not performed. Mm -hmm. And last I checked, you brought your ass out the booth to yep. come back. He you did. have not performed. That is true. So it's easy to say, oh, yeah, Jerry. They make, oh, he wants to win. He's so passionate. I'm glad winning is mutually exclusive to the Dallas Cowboys. Nobody mm -hmm. else wants to win. Mr. Kraft doesn't want to win. The Rooney's doesn't want to win. The Mavs, the owner of the Giants and the Tishers, they don't want to win. No. The Yorks and San Fran, nobody wants to win. But Jerry, mm. only Jerry and Cowboys fans wants to win. That is the delusion that's afflicted the Cowboys fans. That is the delusion that's afflicted Jerry Jones. And you know what? Because Jerry got them gassed up. Jerry had these guys think they win the Super Bowl. Mm. Oh, this is as much talent. And, and even Jason, he chimed in. Since I've been around with a Cowboys, this is much talent. We've been around. Guess what? Doesn't win you anything. Mm. You'll be the most talented Cowboy team ever not to make the playoffs. Because mm. that's the way you're headed. Mm. Under no circumstances. I understand the owner oversees everything and he cuts the check. But I'm never, ever, mm. never stepping out of line with my coach. I'm riding with him. Mm. I'm riding with him. So, I greatly appreciate all the insight you just provided our viewers. You nailed it this time. Jason Garrett did not stand beside and behind his head coach. Hmm. In fact, I wasn't in the locker room, but I scoured for any quote from any player that would back Jason Garrett yesterday, and I found zero. Oh. Nobody stood beside or behind the embattled under fire head yeah. coach. Not one player stepped up and said, we are going to rally around our coach mm -hmm. to effectively save his job. That tells you all you need to know about what's going on with Jason Garrett. He has run his course with that football team. That football team has tuned him out. It does not care about him. There's no love lost there. They don't hate him, and they don't love him. He's a zero to them. He is inconsequential. <laughs> and Jason Witten, who will play politics when it's time to play politics, he knows where the bread is buttered. He knows where the bucks literally stop. He knows who controls the purse strings. That guy, Jerry Jones, does. So it didn't surprise me at all that Jason defended his owner ahead of his coach because Jason's voice still carries some weight in that locker because room. Because it wasn't the coach's decision that Jason came back. That was Jerry Jones' decision. Okay, mm. well, it was probably Jason Witten's decision. I mean, he, but I'm, he I'm said, just yeah, saying right. it wasn't like... I, I got it. Wasn't like, had to bless it. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. It came from the top. And was there a little bit of marquee value to it, a little bit of salesmanship going on? Because Jason still sells to Cowboy Nation, yeah. right? Sure, there was. But the point is, Jason Witten fears Jerry Jones. Jason Witten does not fear Jason Garrett. You with me? Yeah. Because the, the coach strikes no fear in the locker room in anybody's heart. Because, because, yeah. Yeah, because Jerry has stripped him of that ability to play okay. fear. I, I don't think he had any to start with, but whatever he, little that he did have, you're right, stripped. He, he is undercut, undermined by the owner from day one. But the locker room knew that. And I told you, I'm going to say it one more time. When they got so talented and played at such a high level in 2014, Jason got to go along for a great ride. Yeah. Coach Clapp. When Dak fell out of heaven into their laps in 2016, Jason got to go along for a great ride. But all of a sudden, when they need somebody to strike some fear, to make one move that 
reunites and ignites the locker room. He's incapable of doing it. And they all told you yesterday in, in silence by showing you that they don't, they're not going to defend him. They don't care. He's irrelevant to them. But let me, uh, let me ask you a question, Skip. Do you actually think Jerry would have done this to Bill Parcells or Jerry Jones? Would he have said what he said about to, to Jimmy Johnson, Jimmy no, Johnson no. and uh, Bill Parcells? Would he have ever uttered those words that he would have uttered after the game? The, the, word, the critical words, yes. right? No, he would not have. You know why? That's why he hired Jason Garrett. This is why he had Barry, Barry Switzer, mm -hmm. Chan Gailey, Dave Campo, Wade Phillips, and Jason Garrett. Because they will not stand up to him. Yeah, I, I think Barry Switzer would, but they were so close because Barry coached at Arkansas when Jerry yeah. played at Arkansas. So there's a deep dynamic. bond and respect between the two of them. But you're right. You're right on all the other ones. I'm with you on that. Hmm. And by the way, we have a new quote from Jerry Jones to your point that we should, I'm going to read it right now if we could show it. This is recent from Jerry Jones. No one has earned the right to say I'm a Jason Garrett man more than me. I don't have to win the Super Bowl in business every year. I can come in six and have a hell of a year. But in this business, you got to come in first. I want Jason to get it done. Okay, so what he's saying is I still love him like a son. I'm rooting for, no one's rooting for Jason more than Jerry Jones is. But he has turned a corner to where he's finally put him on public notice. He's gotten angry with him to the point that when Jerry loses his temper, he can lose all control and just boom. So what, what did we see? I'm going to remind everybody. He got mad at Jimmy Johnson repeatedly, but the final straw was at the owners' meeting after they won their second Super Bowl together in 1993. So it was in, I believe, February, mm -hmm. maybe March, maybe early March. It was in Tampa, Florida. Mm -hmm. And they were at the hotel. Uh, they, they went to a restaurant near the hotel. Uh, I think it was maybe in Disneyland. D I'm sorry, Disney World yeah. there. But they were at this little restaurant, and Jerry just happened to walk in. The coaches were there. And Jimmy was at the head of the table, and they were all drinking whatever they were drinking. And Jerry walked up and stood by the table and proposed a toast to the Cowboys. And everybody, of course, clinked glasses except for Jimmy at the end of the table, and he wouldn't even lift his glass. Mm -hmm. Okay, So he wasn't even invited. Thank you. <laughs> that is correct. That was the final straw. And effectively, what, what Jerry saw on the field Sunday night was close to a final straw with Jason Garrett in a different way because the team knows – the owner has a bad temper, an ugly temper, mm -hmm. that if he ever loses it, he strikes fear. Like, Jason Witten is afraid of, J of Jerry Jones. He's afraid of the temper. But here's the thing. Because they know he fired Jimmy Johnson after two Super Bowls. In order for him to stand up to mm -hmm. Jimmy, mm -hmm. he had to fire him. He did. But he belittles Jason Garrett in yep. every chance he gets. I mean, hey. not, not, not openly, but, but sort of between the lines. He never said nothing. Skip. Jimmy had been blatantly disrespectful mm -hmm. for Jerry for, for, to Jerry for, for years. For years. Behind and the scenes. Behind yes. the scenes. And Jerry never said, they lost the game, he never said anything. But the moment Jason Garrett loses the game or doesn't go for it on fourth down or a play gets blocked, mm -hmm. he calls him out. That's true. Do you actually think, yeah. if Je if you actually think Jason Garrett would have backed this owner over Jimmy Johnson? Because mm. Jimmy would have got his ass up out of there. You know why J Jason doesn't fear uh, Jason Garrett? Mm. Because he knows he got that guy in his corner. And ever since Jimmy left, and ever since they got rid of uh, Parcells, players have had a pipeline. They can weave their way, go right up and talk to Jerry you can, above the head coach. You can make that case. It's why I've always wished that Jerry's wish could come true. I could coach the you-know-what out of this team. There are times I wish, you know what, I wish you could be the head coach because they would fear you. Of course, the buck stops with you. And he's been the general manager from day one. Yes. So don't call him the owner. He's really operating as he's the... Been a, Skip, he's been the owner, the general, general manager, manager, the VP. He, he's been everything. everything. He's everything. Yes. He controls... Every, he, yes. His opening press conference when he took over in 1989 was, I want to know everything about this franchise down to the socks and jocks. That's what he said. Socks and jocks. Yes. So he knows all, and he wants to control all, except he's not the head coach. No. So in the end, I wish he could be the head coach. Just, he can. It'll never happen. But but again, because he don't want he yeah. wants he wants all the credit when they win and none of the responsibility when they lose. Because if he's the head coach, now who you gonna blame? Yeah, all the talent that you've accumulated. If he really thought he could get away with it, I think he would coach the team. Now, not in at this age, but if it, maybe 10, 15 same. years yeah. ago, he would have coached. Yeah, maybe early, maybe early maybe. on. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But now, I don't know if. 
I don't know. But he still seems to have high energy. I, I would love to see him give that it a try. That would take a lot out of the guy. Ooh. Jeez, he takes Ooh. it on as you know, good work enough as it is. No coach. <laughs> I know, but, but it's seriously, he, he's got the makeup to inspire a football team. Because, listen, you want to talk about a super salesman? If you sit with Jerry Jones oh, yeah, for, yeah. like, five minutes, you're ready to run through the wall. He got, Seriously. He got personality like no other owner you've ever been around. It, hmm. it works. It's, it, he's it, infectious. It, it cuts through. It you, breaks you, through. You, you be, Jerry starts to talk, and you believe everything he's saying. Yep. You, and you know it's a lie, really? but he's so that convincing. Is that oh. is true. Oh, man, oh, man, he's 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 That's... This is why all the players that's ever played for him speak so glowingly about him. Mm -hmm. But that's the aspect that if you work for him and you're the head coach, the part that you despise, because he takes nothing into account that there has to be like, oh, come on yep. now. You, you can't say certain things and, and publicly. Trust me on this. I have seen Jerry Jones lose his temper. It is scary. It's why he's a good commanding officer of the whole franchise right. because everybody who works under Jerry, huh. they're afraid of. Oh, yeah. Him. Nobody's afraid of Jason. He doesn't lose his ugly. I've never seen him lose his temper. I'm sure he has, but I don't think anybody fears him losing. What are you gonna temper. do? He loses his temper and do what? Yeah. Cut me? Yeah. Hey Jerry, guess what? Jason Garrett said he cut. Fine, going back down to meeting. Hmm. He could call you out publicly, <laughs> yeah. but he's not built no. like that. It's interesting. You know? How you gonna call the man out publicly? Yeah. You got to clear that with Jerry. Jerry, do you mind if I call this guy publicly? No, nah, don't do that. Mm. And now then what, where are you? Mm. Because you know he has to run everything by Jerry. Mm. It's an interesting dynamic that both of you guys have spent so much time. I know you've spent so much time with Just him. Just being around the dynamic of the Hall of Fame. And it is interesting that both of you know so much about him because <laughs> I think that uh, his words are beginning to be more and more telling with his frustration. Yep. So we'll see if they get it done tomorrow. We'll have more on that game. But first, what in the world is going on with Brady and Belichick Ooh. this week? Yeah, Things on. are weird, and we're going to try to make sense of it next. Yeah. No mercy. There is some highly abnormal behavior coming out of Foxborough this week. Bill Belichick took time out of his day yesterday to discuss his role on the selection panel for the NFL 100 all-time team, saying that the overall experience has made him a better coach. Meanwhile, Tom Brady uncharacteristically spoke about his recent elbow injury during his weekly radio interview. And Brady said he's been getting ahead of the injury and expects to be feeling better this week. So, Shannon... What do you make of all this? Mm. Skip, you don't want to go further on the elbow? Yeah, I'll go. Yeah. Skip, I'll go. Skip. Did me, I, did I say this. Shannon? Okay. My bad. It's okay. It's okay. Skip. So let's think about this. What okay. do we have in the last 24 hours? We have Tom Brady doing something I don't think he's ever done ever. before. Yeah, that's weird. Which is going to specifics about an injury. Right. This one to his elbow. Bill Belichick, to my knowledge did something he has never done before to the point that Mike Reese, who covers the Patriots for ESPN.com, said he took a rare break from his usually laser-focused approach to the next opponent to elaborate on what Bill called a great experience. So what did he do? He wanted to talk, or in my opinion, gloat about... Mm. I've been a key figure, a key component in selecting. What, I was selected. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and I was selected, but I'm, I'm the coach, because I'm the greatest coach ever, who's been watching tape of all the greatest players so that I could help select what's called the NFL 100 all-time team, mm -hmm. slowly being revealed. Mm -hmm. So the point is, he wants to say, hey, everybody, look at me on a Tuesday when usually he's on to Cincinnati or, you know, on to Whoever Houston. Is, you know, yeah. they're, they're actually Houston going Sunday to Houston. Night, right? yeah. And what is Tom Brady saying? Tom is saying, hey, everybody, I'm, I'm actually playing hurt. I'm doing this in spite of my elbow because what really shocked me was I, I assume Brady demanded this happen. But remember, after Friday's practice last week, for the first time in forever, Tom Brady was on the injury report as limited after the Friday, not the Wednesday or Thursday, but after the Friday practice. Mm -hmm. It's never happened before. He wanted everybody to know, I'm playing hurt. Mm -hmm. So what is happening? The, the battle between Belichick and Brady, the ego battle, is quietly raging is between up, huh? the lines and under the surface. Oh. And we've been talking much of this morning about Jerry Jones and Jason Garrett, which is a very good story. This is still the best story in the NFL. Even though it's a little off radar, you can just see the ego battle going on between Tom Brady saying, 
hey, we're 10 and 1. I don't have any weapons and I'm playing hurt. And Belichick's saying, hey, everybody, I'm the key component in selecting the top 100 all time team, <laughs> right? Yep. So you, you have the ego battle that is leading to a battle on the field that I, I don't know how they're, they're kind of winning in spite of each other mm -hmm. right now. And it still seems to be working because they're both really great at what they do. Yeah. Skip, <laughs> don't you find it interesting? A team that, you know, the injury report, a lot of this was going on with the injury stuff was because of the Patriots, because they listed nobody's injury. All of a sudden, the guy just wouldn't play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You he wasn't on the injury report or nothing. And they got called on it. And they got called on it. Yeah. A team, Skip, I've never heard a player of all the years, I've never play, heard a player mention being injured playing for the Patriots. Not out of the blue. Tom Brady, the guy that's laser focused that doesn't mention anything, don't want any excuses. Jenny, you think it's, it's odd? But all of a sudden, he's not playing different. up the standard. But the reason why I'm not playing up is the elbow. Now, Skip Bayless told me all-time great shouldn't make excuses because when LeBron James said he had a little nagging, LeBron, why would you build that into an excuse? Why would you give your team something like, man, LeBron is not at his absolute best? Mm. Tom, why would you do this? Mm. Now, because you're not playing well, Skip, the guy that threw – Tom Brady, I heard, I don't know if it's true, that Tom Brady was the first guy in NFL history to throw for 500 yards without a thumb. Because remember, he lost his thumb in an accident. So he played the Super Bowl without a thumb. Ha uh ha. -huh. Yeah, Skip. Didn't he want to talk that about real, it? That was a real injury. Uh, he posted a picture of it and it had 12 stitches in it. Can you imagine what did Coach Belichick say? Mm. He didn't have open heart surgery. He did. Yeah, that's what he said. Completely discounted. <laughs> it. Right. He said it was a big media overreaction. When Tom Brady told, it's hard to in 20 years of all this football Tom Brady's played, played a quarterback, a physical game. I've never heard him mention anything about injury. So mm -hmm. this is the first time in 20 seasons that Tom Brady's been a little banged up, mm -hmm. a little nick. Is that what Tom Brady wants us to believe? No. Because as you start to age, and I say this, Skip. Mm. As we start to age, the little ticky tack injuries start to come with greater regularity, and they start to linger a little longer. Tom Brady's realizing, hmm, mm. <laughs> we do between this injury and Coach Belichick putting me on a putting me on a, a, a one way uh, bus out of here. Mm. I don't think I'm gonna be right here until I'm 45. Mm. You know that, I know that. I don't want to hear no excuse. Mm. Tom Brady has not played well this year. He's not playing well this mm. year. And he came up out of the blue with all of a sudden my elbow. I want y'all to put this on the injury report because I want y'all to see me throwing for 190 yards. The reason why, because I got a little elbow. Now, mm. I ain't buying it. Mm. I'm like Miss Melody. I'm not buying it, Skip Bayless. <laughs> so you know what? <laughs> Told you. I told you, Skip Bayless, this was going to happen. Mm, yeah, it you've been that. telling me for three years. No, 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 I'm right this time. <laughs> I'm right this time. Oh, this time. time. Yep, this yep, time. Yep, 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 you know, yep, at yep. some point, you're going to be right because he's 42 years old. Yeah. So but, maybe when he's 48, you're going to be right. Yeah, well, well, hey, he, he upped the ante to my 47 because Coach, Bella, oh. Coach Belichick said he's going to coach the. But for me, I, I agree with you on Coach Belichick, Skip. Here's a guy that's maniacal in his approach. Nothing. And once the season starts, he doesn't get outside. He doesn't come outside of his cage. Mm -mm. It's all about football. It's all about the next opponent. It's one foot. I don't know what's to the left. I don't know what's to the right. I don't know what's behind me because it's unimportant. And for him to take mm -hmm. time out of the schedule, yep. I understand it was a Tuesday skip. It's everybody's customarily day, customary day off. But it's his day of film study yes. and game planning. Yes, yep. yes. And, and by the way, remember, he called the reporters together. Yes. And the only other time I remember him calling his own little media session was the Saturday in the week off, at the end of the week off before the Seattle Super Bowl because he wanted to tell the world. Do you remember this? Oh, yeah. Don't ask blame Tom. me for the play gate. He said, ask, ask Tom. Tom. Ask the quarterback. Don't don't look at me. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know anything about this. Ask the quarterback. And, and, right? and, and the film study skill, Coach Belichick has been around this game. I, if he's, he's 67, I'm going to say Coach Belichick has been around the league for 40 years. Yep. And I'm, I'm going to be conservative in that. And for the most of the modern players from the LT, he coached Reggie White. He was in the same division. A lot of these modern players, Coach Belichick either coached or coached against. Mm -hmm. Maybe he had to go back and watch tape of guys in the 30s and the 40s. Let's, let's just say pre-Super Bowl, pre-Super Bowl, or pre-merger, mm -hmm. I think with 66 when they had, they had the merger. But Skip, but for him, to, for Coach Belichick to offer you a glimpse and say, yeah, I'm the coach, and I, I took great pleasure in, in, in having to study all the game tape and look at the different eras and the different players and the different coaches. Hmm. It's a humble brag. Yeah, That's right. what they call humble he's that, brag. He's right? our GOAT. 
Yeah, he's I'm out, the GOAT. He said, I don't know about who all going to make this team, but I know who the coach is going to be. Yep. <laughs> so, I agree with you on that. I disagree with you on Brady because it's not about his age that he's talking about or that he's finally getting more hurt. It's about credit. They are vying for credit because for Tom wants more credit than he is getting from the Shannon Sharps because he's oh. saying – what he's saying is, I have no weapons and I'm playing hurt yep. and we're 10-1. and one. Uh, uh, and Coach Belichick oh. said, you get no credit because have you seen how you've been playing? It's the defense. Oh. What game has Tom Brady led a game-winning drive, Skip? Mm. When was that? Mm. Huh? Well, he hasn't winning had games. to. He's he, winning games. Yeah, he's winning. He's mm. a great ride. Mm. Skip, like I said, he, he the dude in the nice car, mm. but it's not his car. He in the passenger seat. Boy, he and he'll be it. hollering at everybody. That doing, hey, babe, hey chick, let me holler at yeah. you. Come holler at your boy. It's not your think, car. I don't think he's doing that. Yeah, what he doing? He's he definitely not doing that. He said, look at, look yeah. at your he boy. He has the I'm the quarterback. The yeah. And Coach Belich- Belichick said, hey, bro, it's not your team. <laughs> yep. It's not your team. Well, usually any Patriot would tell you it's a big disadvantage to disclose injuries because then people know, <laughs> yeah. right? Oh, you got to see, it's an advantage. So, because guess what he just did? Hmm. So that's why Tom isn't playing well. He wants the excuse. Hmm. Tom Brady never mentions this. Hmm. So it's hard for me to believe. I played 14. I didn't play. So Tom Brady's already passed me by six years. It's hard for me to believe this is the first time Tom Brady's had an injury. No shoulders, no elbow, no knee, no wrist. Mm. And he mentioned this. Well, he had one big knee. We know that. Yeah, wait, wait. We saw this. Right. But I'm saying during the season that yep. he's been able to play. Long it's been. Yep. Come on, Skip. Uh. You don't find that odd? I find it very yeah. Uh, significant. Yeah, I find it odd. Yeah, I because think he's, he's playing like stir fry. No, and we got to have a reason why he's playing like stir fry. We're going to talk about this later, but he's playing really no, well. No, he made fry. some throws in that game yeah. that were big time. Where, where's that? Where's that? Hold on. Where are the stats to back it up that he's playing well? Leads. Like, wait, wait. Thanks for asking. He leads the league in completions and in what are called catchable passes. Leads all league. Yeah. He's thrown more catchable passes than yeah. all the rest of the yeah. quarterbacks. How many, how wow. Many, how many screens in jail? How many? How many how many swing pass to the running back? Those can be tough to throw. No, they can't even stop yeah. doing that. Yeah. I'm just trying to say. Now, see, you normally point to QBR. He's no more than QBR. Mm. Not that. And completion percentage. Mm. He's not that. Mm. Uh, come on, Skip Baylor. Mm. Uh, completions under pressure. Touchdown passes. Touchdown interception. You should give me all these. Just rattle them off. Huh. This sound like I got this 39, 40, 41. The only mat- number that matters right now is 10 slash one, or 10 dash one, right? 10 and one. Oh, the defense is doing a heck of a job. Yeah. The defense is doing a heck of a job. Wait, Shannon Sharp told me the defense is overrated. No, 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 no. The no, defense no, no, no. hasn't played anybody, including yeah. my Cowboys uh, now, right? Uh, uh, uh. Because you uh, thought uh, my Cowboy uh, offense uh, 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 was overrated. We, we, we've, we've seen, we've seen them. We've, mm. uh, and no, when they're playing the, my, yeah. the Dolphins and the Jets and yeah. all that. Okay, we're starting to see after 10, 11 weeks of the season, mm. we get a sense of who you are. After 10, 11 weeks in the season, what do you see from the Patriots offense? Mm. I'm not talking about the defense. Forget the defense. Because mm. Tom Brady, like you okay, tell I'll, me. Okay, I'll tell you what I see. It's what I don't see. I don't see a Gronk. I don't see an A.B. Uh, nah, don't I don't see, see a Josh Gordon. I, I don't see anybody. I see Julian Edelman or Bust. Oh. I finally saw one little flash of Nikhil Harry Hold in the on. first round. Got the I flash. know Tom Brady has never won flash. a Super Bowl without Gronk. Mm. I know Tom Brady ain't won no Super Bowls mm. without Gronk. Mm. Did he? Hold on. Where was Gronk in the Atlanta Super Bowl? Was he there? Mm. You, you mean to tell me Gronk did not play in the Atlanta Super Bowl and then was down 28-3 and Tom mm. Brady won? Mm. Oh, my goodness. Mm. What about those pre- three previous Super Bowls before Gronk set foot in the NFL? Mm. Skip, stop doing this. It helps to have somebody. And no, 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 no. The Dorchester. Go get mm. those guys. So those three. are the same guys. Yep. Those are the same guys mm-hmm. that he won with. The yep. Dorchester guys, yep. he won with them. He, he's, he's throwing to them now. To him. Mm-hmm. And their names are Gunnar Oshevsky <laughs> and Matt Lacoste yeah. and Ryan Izzo. Those yeah. are the three you guys from up, Dorchester. Yeah. Look them up. They're, They're all not, from Dorchester. Valdez, Scantlin, <laughs> yeah. Geronimo Allison. Those are really Jarman. good players. Those are not really good. Yeah. Undrafted. Uh, Devontae no Adams, way. Jimmy Graham. Boom, boom. Skip. Wow. Now, you know Jimmy Graham. Tom doesn't have Jimmy Graham. Guys. Sorry. Well, you know it. He's really good. 10-1. and one. That's what matters right now. Mm. He's getting it done regardless of who he's playing. And by the way, I would like to know the, the exact – Issue with the elbow because that's the one thing I don't nothing. know. Nothing. Yeah. Is it zero? Is it overuse or is it bone bruise or what? It's nothing. Is it cracked. I know what it is. It's called excusitis. Oh, okay. Yeah, man. Uh. That excusitis get. Jenny, when that excusitis get on you, <laughs> really? Boy, it's hard to get. You can't put enough ice. Well, you can't take no enough anti inflammatory for that. For that. Even worse, <laughs> ego itis. And it's all over Belichick. He's so oh, infected. But, but hold on. But Tommy got no yeah. ego. Yeah. Tommy, I just want to hear you no, say he's it. Got a okay. Big ego. Okay. 
the, the greater the person, the bigger the ego. Yep. If Tom Grady is historically and Pantheon great mm -hmm. as you say it is, yep. his ego should, is equally to match. Am mm -hmm. I correct? Yeah. Okay, that's all I wanted to hear. The yep. dynamic between the two, Belichick Whew. and Brady. I'm in Coach Belichick. Will I'm back in my coach. Well, forever. Hey, I'm back in Brady, and Brady's got the big guy on his I'm side. Back in, I'm switch, back in Coach Belichick. Yeah. We are going to switch Coach Belichick, gears. my guy. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. If two teams were that interested in Colin Kaepernick, then wow. why hasn't he been signed? Good the question. latest yeah. next. Very good. No mercy. Guys, Colin Kaepernick's much-anticipated workout has come and gone, but the QB remains unsigned. According to a report, part of the reason the NFL initially reached out to Kaepernick to set up a workout was because two teams were legitimately interested in the free agent and had reached out to the league. So an interesting dynamic here. Shannon, are you surprised that Kaepernick hasn't been signed? No. Um, I don't believe there were two teams, sincerely, uh, that was really genuinely interested in Colin Kaepernick. Because they had three years. Skip, the way free agency works is that you bring a guy, if you're interested in a player, you get in touch with his representative. If he does not have a representative, he represents himself, you get in touch with said player. If there are two teams, he has to make a decision which team he wants to visit first. He goes, he works out for said team. If the team likes it, mm -hmm. likes what they see, they make sure that guy never gets an opportunity to visit or work out for other t another team. Skip, you see this in free agency. When they get a guy coming in, it's like four or five teams, they like this guy, he never leaves without signing that contract. They want him. It's hard for me to believe after three years, two teams in the middle of the season, in the 100th anniversary of the NFL, mm -hmm. all of a sudden have shown interest in Colin Kaepernick. Three months, four months after his last play the game in 2016, leading, um, leading to 2017, not one team called. Mm -hmm. Skip, they're bringing guys out of retirement. Guys that have not thrown an NFL football in four and five years. Mm -hmm. So we're three years removed from that. And all of a sudden, there's interest. I thought the NFL did everything they could to knock down. They were not influencing teams' ability to sign cap. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to hold a workout for two teams? Because now what you do, Skip, is, and the NFL has tried to do a great job of trying to show they don't curry favor for, for uh, individual teams. Yes, this is a league divided up of 32 teams who all, all hold the same level of influence, or that's what the NFL would have you think. Yep. But not, not this. So when people say, oh, y'all white ball cap, nah, nah, teams can sign them if they want to. Now all of a sudden, you don't have the, you don't have the power to dictate that he shouldn't be signed, but you know what? We're having this workout. We want all y'all to come. And 25 of the teams go, Really? So Atlanta, I had never heard, I lived in Atlanta. I ain't never heard the Falcons being interested in Colin Kaepernick. No. Detroit, really? When, 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 when Miss Ford, uh, the owner, uh, uh, Miss Ford, she took over for her husband. She said, I will pay whatever cause you want. I will pay you to stand for the national anthem. And they thinking about signing Cap? Hmm. Do they really think people are dumb? I hate the fact that I asked Cap, Cap, go ahead and show up, bro. Because it was a sham from the beginning and everybody knew it was. Yep. He knew it was, but his heart, against his better judgment, Cap probably went thinking, you know what? They might be trying to do the right thing for once. They're going to do the right thing. No, they weren't. Mm. This was never a real, a sincere, genuine opportunity for Cap to get an opportunity to play. Because I believe, because I've been around it too long, Skip. you covered it too long. You know how they sign free agency. They've never, ever... Going to this link, the NFL says, you know what? We're holding an open tryout for a play for two teams. I, Skip, I can see if it was 30 teams, but for two teams. Mm -hmm. Why would the NFL, Skip, why would the NFL implore, get uh, mm -hmm. that cost? Yep. Why not the teams? Y'all want to sign him? Now, I can see, Skip, if it's a situation like A.B. Because A.B. got something going on. So the team's like, okay, NFL, what's going on with A.B.? If we sign him, what happens? Can we sign him? Can we play him? Okay, I get that. But Colin Kaepernick does not have that. Co Colin Kaepernick is under no, no red flag that says, you know what, you can't sign him, and if you sign him, we're going to put him on a con conditioner's list until we find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. Nah, I don't believe it. I don't believe anything that the NFL has said about this was a legitimate workout. Mm -hmm. And they set Cap up, Cap walked into a trap, and when he moved it, they could say, see, I told you, he was going to be more trouble than what he's worth. There was never a team, one team, two teams, ten mm -hmm. teams, not one. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. Unless the general manager, unless one somebody from the general manager, and they'll never say it. 
It's hard for me to believe that after three years, they were going to sign Cap in the middle of the season. Mm. So I agree with your big picture takeaway on this. It was a sham from the start. It had no chance of succeeding as far as getting Cap to a team. Right. But Howard Bryant, who wrote this excellent piece for ESPN.com, declares up front, all my information, my point of view is all from Colin Kaepernick's camp, his right. side. You're right. right. Okay, so he's saying this is not from the NFL side of the story. Right. This is Cap's side. Right. And the way Howard has been told by Cap's camp, what initially prompted this sort of combine-style workout was the fact, according to Howard, from the camp, that two teams had expressed to Commissioner Goodell high interest in Colin Kaepernick. Now, take it or leave it, but that's that's the genesis, according to Howard, of this whole ordeal was that. And that already Commissioner Goodell was getting strong encouragement from Jay-Z, who now works with the NFL on these kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. Dr. Harry Edwards, I don't, do you know Dr. Edwards? I do. Who's been an advisor to the NFL. For the 49ers, he's the 49ers guy for the longest. And that those two, Jay-Z and Dr. Edwards, had been strongly encouraging Commissioner Goodell to to address this, to try to to end it or or start it. Whatever, Whatever you, you know, do something to make this thing move one direction or the other. So all of a sudden, Commissioner Goodell gets the bright idea. Well, the, the teams are, according to the story, expressing some concern about media circus if we bring Colin in for a workout. Hey, if you really want to sign the guy, nobody cares about the media circus. What the hell you yeah. think an NFL organized okay. Okay. for 25 okay, teams was going to generate? Okay, so the, the way I'm reading this was that Commissioner Goodell thought we could spread the focus of the media circus mm. to all 32 teams or however many showed up. And originally it was supposed to be, what, 25? 25. So it would be spread to all teams as opposed to one and then one if they brought him in for workouts. As you said, I've been covering this game for too long to know if you really want a player, especially a quarterback, most valuable position on the field, if you were dead set on I need Colin Kaepernick, it's like damn the torpedoes, man. Just, just do it. You, just, br- you bring him in you for an individual in. workout. You can. Skip. When the Broncos signed Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning was coming off the neck surgery. Peyton could barely throw the ball ten yards. Ten yards. But John Elway needed to see him at least throw the football. Yep. He went down to the workout at Duke. He did. And he saw him. We'll take it. And by the way. If you really, really want to keep Thank it you. quiet, you could keep it quiet. Thank you. If you really wanted to, and and if Colin were were along for, with this, if he were in on this, to where he said, "Okay, I'm with you." If Colin thought this was a, a team that he wanted to be with, he would cooperate, and they would make it a private workout. Thank you. You could. Yes. And then you could announce the bombshell signing of Colin Kaepernick. And you just have to put up with the media. You'd have to accept that was part of the deal. Skip. Right? What do you think the NFL thought was going to happen? We're having a workout for Colin Kaepernick in the middle of the season in the 100th anniversary of the NFL. On Saturday. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. You'd well, have got less, Skip, I believe you'd have got, like you said, less attention with a private workout. You would Cap, we want to work you out. We just, let's pull it off. Let's do this. Because it, it doesn't, you, you don't need much. You just need to make sure he looks in decent shape. Thank you. His arm's fine. Thank you. you. Know? And we know that. We knew he would be. We've seen the videos. I just... I, I, listen, if I really wanted Colin Kaepernick and I thought he could help my football team, I could look at his, his videos and say, well, I, I know his tape. I know his game tape. I'd just bring him in and say, let's go. Yeah, they, they were bringing guys out of retirement. Yep. They took a guy off Absolutely. our network. They took guys that hadn't thrown football that had been on nine teams and hadn't thrown a football in five years instead of signing a guy that had last played an NFL game four months ago. Mm. A kid named Duck is going to start for the Steelers. Duck. Duck. Yep, and that's what we've come to. Jeff Driscoll mm-hmm. starting in the, was starting he for was. the Detroit Lions. Yep. Let that sink in. Yeah. Man, they need to stop. Just go ahead and say, look, okay. we, we – Skip, they, they, they've they intended to make a, Skip, remember, punishment, what it's meant to do, to punish the offender mm-hmm. and deter anybody else from doing such things. Yep. Okay, you've already made your point. I think you made your message loud, got your message across loud and clear. Mm-hmm. 
But the, 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 the dude just around and make it seem like the guy, oh, you, we had a legitimate chance, and he blew it. Man, stop. Yeah. I can't I blow what wasn't really there to I, begin I'm with. I'm still where I was the Monday after it all fell apart. I'm still not sure Colin really, really wants to play football. I, I'm still – I have my doubts about this where I still think he's – prefers to be more of a martyr than a football player because he doesn't want to be a backup quarterback. And I'm really, really yep. sure 100% yep. the NFL does not want That's, Colin to play. Yep. And five weeks with left in the regular season. What are you going to so do, Skip? This is looking mm -hmm. more and more unlikely yep. that Colin Kaepernick joins a team, and that uh, is yep. the latest there. How about this, though? A former Cowboy does Bryant a lot to say about Ooh. Jason Garrett and how he handles the Cowboys' locker room. Ooh. We will tell you what he said next. No mercy. While watching the Ravens dismantle the Rams on Monday Night Football, Des Bryant tweeted about how, boy, how Cowboys head coach Jason Garrett could learn a thing or two from Ravens head coach John Harbaugh. Des tweeted this, Coach Garrett needs to have a sit down with John Harbaugh and learn how to relate better with his black players. It's hard to win whenever you got a divided organization. I 100% don't believe Coach is racist. He just can't relate. Uh, Shannon, what is your reaction to Des saying this? Skip, it's hard for me to understand exactly just what he's saying. Yep. Um, when he doesn't, what well, I mean, doesn't let the type of music that you play. Um, I, I think for me, I think a player that becomes a head coach should have the easiest job being able to relate because he's been in that locker room, Skip. 70% of the players are black when he played and currently. So you would think he would know how to, 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 to interact and, and how to deal with black players. For me, Skip, I think it has a lot to do with the locker room. The Baltimore Ravens locker room is very, very unique. It's player dominant. Mm -hmm. And from Brian Billick to John Harbaugh, they've let the players you do your thing. You do what you want to do. We play music loud before the game. Brian had no problem with that. You just do you. Mm. Uh, I don't get what he's saying, Skip, and I, I know you see John Harbaugh, the way he interacts with, uh, with uh, Lamar Jackson, putting his arm around him, saying, hey, there are kids out there that wants to be Lamar Jackson. Yep. They're buying your jersey. Maybe mm. it has that kind of interaction. Maybe, you know, that's not Dad's, That's Maybe it's Dad's. That's not Dak and Jason's relationship. Each coach, each player have a different, unique, especially the quarterback, Skip, mm -hmm. have a very unique person, uh, 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 dynamic when it comes to their relationship. I agree. For us, when we were playing with Mike in the, in the, uh, the mid-90s and we were very good, I would just, hey, like, Mike, man, we want to watch the fight. He's like, 84, who's fighting? That's what he, you know, we went by numbers. He's like, 84. I like Tyson Holyfield. Okay, hey, no problem. He'd say, but, hey, I'm counting on you to get them ready now. Yeah. No problem. That's and that's how it was. I, I, so Skip, unless he can give me some context yeah. of what he's talking about, it's hard for me to understand. Uh, every coach is not going to be. But you think Coach Belichick? Coach Belichick ain't rapping it. He hugging guys coming off the field to make a good play, but he ain't walking down the sideline, up and down the sideline with his arm around their waist and all that stuff. No. Coach Belichick ain't telling. Coach Belichick is not telling no player. You know, hey, they're going to be guys growing up that want to be like you. You revolutionized the game. Coach nope. Belichick ain't doing that. Nope. So each coach is skip. Look, I still believe Dez is hurt how it ended for him and Dallas. I agree. And I believe he holds Jason Garrett culpable. He does. I believe he thinks Jason didn't fight hard enough for him. That's a fact. But I believe no matter what Jason Garrett had said, Jerry Jones has made it abundantly clear, Skip, when it comes to any decision mm -hmm. the involving the Dallas Cowboys, the buck stops on his table, mm -hmm. on his desk. He's made that abundantly clear. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to need Dez to provide some context of what he means when he says he doesn't know how to mm -hmm. relate to black players. Okay. I'm glad you brought up the point, ax to grind. So you have to keep it in that context. But I did appreciate that Dez is mature enough to know you, you have to draw a line before you go over the line. And he made it very clear, 100% he's not racist. Right. He just can't relate. Right. Well, there's a big difference because if you're going to condemn him right. as he hated me because I was black, he got rid of me because I was black, yeah. okay, then we got a whole other issue. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But that's not what he did. So I'm going to take it from my side of the table over here. Okay. I don't believe Jason Garrett relates well to white players. <laughs> I don't believe he relates well to any players, any of his players huh? even though he was a player. Right. Hmm. But I've called Jason this. This is an old line from Dwayne Thomas on Tom Landry, and you're old enough to know Dwayne I Thomas. Do. 
starred in one Super Bowl for the Dallas Cowboys and had a classic interview after the game with Tom Richard. He was Tom the first Richard. 33. He was. He was the first 33. He called Tom Landry, the great Tom Landry, a plastic man. And I have called as early as after the 2015 season. I said the ultimate plastic man is actually Jason Garrett. <laughs> so to me, Dez is on to something that's sort of hard to describe, but Jason Garrett's not a motivator. He doesn't have much connection with black or white players in that he's he can't push your button. Right. You've had coaches. Mike Shanahan knew how to push your button. He did. And he could bring you in, 84, and call you out just across the table, just man-to-man, one-on-one, yes. and it worked for you. Yes. You didn't rebel against that. You no. you thrived on it. Right. You, you flourished. You responded well yeah. to his private criticism right. of you because mm-hmm. he knew that's how I motivate 84, and I need 84 because right. he holds the key to my whole locker room. 84 does. Yeah. So he – he was wise enough to say, okay, I got to work through 84. I can't criticize him on the practice field. I can't show him up. I can't show him. I definitely can't show him up in the locker room. Right. But I can occasionally bring him in and say, hey, I need you to whatever. And that's right? how we do it. Yep. Okay. Jason does not seem to have that ability or skill because, to me, as personable as he, is, he can be, especially with Jerry Jones, it's surface personable. Mm-hmm. It's it's plasticky personable, where there's no there there. There's no soul to it. I'm not talking about black soul. I'm just right. talking about he doesn't seem to have a, a kind of connectability to him where you can sit down and really get to know each other. Right. You, you, you with me? Mm-hmm. So Des is really on to something where Harbaugh seems to connect with, I'm sure he connects with white players too, yeah. where he just sort of gets it and he has a, a personality that's accessible. Right. Right? Right. Okay. And, and, and the Baltimore skill, what is Baltimore known for? Big personality. Yep. Ray Lewis, yep. Suggs. Yep. Now you have Lamar Jackson who's a, who's quiet, but you see the way his personality is infectious. Hey, Mark, way... Mark Ingram's personality yeah. has come way oh out gosh. since he left Sean Payton. Yes, yes. So Sean Payton wants to be the star so of that team. Exactly. Right? And so you have to understand, like, okay, it's about the players, and he's hugging and yucking it up and, and joking. But you, Skip, it's it's an in, it's a coach by coach, coach. By, the way Mike Tomlin treats his player mm-hmm. is going to be different the way Coach Belichick treats his, mm-hmm. and the way Sean Payton treats his, mm-hmm. and the way X. So you can't. Mm-hmm. I, I don't really know, but that's the only coach he's had. Mm-hmm. So what is he? What is it, Skip? It's not like he had like two or three coaches, mm-hmm. and he has something to compare mm-hmm. it to. Yep. Nope. I mean, I can, I can compare it. I had Dan Reeves. I had Wade Phillips. I yep. had Mike Shanahan. I had Brian Billick. So I can say, well, this guy was like this and that guy was like that. But he's only had one coach. Yeah, no, that's true. And by the way, Dan Reeves, who I knew very well, he had that ability to connect, but he was just so tough. He was so old school that he was hard to play for. Yes, but he was very, very, very demanding. Yes, very demanding. So in the end, all I know about Jason Garrett this year is Eight times in 11 games, my team has come out not motivated, not ready for kickoff because it has quickly fallen behind. And even at New England, it fell behind 10 to nothing and it felt like 40 to nothing Mm -hmm. because of the elements and because it's Foxborough, Brady, Belichick, right? So, you know, I keep telling you, I don't believe Jason Garrett could motivate a rodeo bull in the chute before the gates open. <laughs> and, you know, obviously you don't even need to. Right. But I, I, it. I think the bull would walk out if Jason Garrett <laughs> whispered in its ear, right? <laughs> so, in the end, it, it, he, Dez is on to something. And I, this is the first time I, I appreciate what he has said because he is – Hitting the nail on the head. But Skip, I, I think Jerry knew what he was getting when he got Jason Gary. He knows Jason is not a motivator. You know the guys that motivate the players mm-hmm. and get them ready to go. I remember there have been times in, in camp, Skip, when I when I on my return, that I was going to have the morning off, and you know that was one of the things that Mike told me. Said when you come back, eighty four, I'm going to take care of your practice. Mm-hmm. You know, you still it's not like it is now, but they would like I was supposed to have the morning off, and Co- Gary Kubiak would come to me and says eighty four. He called Mike Boss. He said, the boss want to know, if you can you go this morning? He said, because the practice won't be the same if you're not there. Mm. Oh, no problem. Let me mm. get my stuff. Let me get ready to go. Because that was okay. that was kind of my yep. role, Skip. Yep. You know, and I understood that. So that was the how, like I said, I need Dez to give me. Dez, give me an example of what you're talking about. Yep. If you can provide an example or give me some context to what you're just saying, he can't relate. Yep. But, I mean, playing the music, I mean. Yeah. Okay, so the. All-time flip side of Jason Garrett for me 
was a coach I knew very well, continue to know very well, Barry Switzer, mm. who actually had a deeper connection to my eye and, and my sort of observance with the black players than he did with the white players. Mm. Those black players on the 95 team, Dion, Michael Irvin, Charles Haley, they would run through the locker room wall for Barry Switzer. Mm -hmm. Deep connection of motivation. They, came, they knew when it was time to play, they were going to play hard for that coach. But he was party hard, play hard right. coach. Mm -hmm. That's, that was his whole motto. <laughs> so just be there for kick, be ready for kickoff. Yep. Yep. That's, okay. Al Davis just yep. win. Yep. I don't care what they – like, are you going to suspend those guys for missing – no, for mm. what? Just win. Mm. Just the different styles for it is. everyone. There, I mean, it's interesting, and you've experienced a lot of those. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, guys, former Steelers great James Woo. Harrison is going to join us to discuss the Steelers-Browns mm. fight and what to expect in the rematch on Sunday. I can't believe the rematch is already here. That is next. No mercy. Guys, Mason Rudolph will be on the bench when the Steelers and Browns face off on Sunday for the first time since Miles Garrett hit the QB over the head with his own helmet. Rudolph was fine, but not suspended for his part in the fight, while Garrett's indefinite suspension was upheld after his appeal. Fox Sports NFL analyst and former Steeler great, uh, mm. James Harrison, you're with us. You've been talking to us about this since it happened, really. And I want to start with you. What is your biggest takeaway from everything that has happened? Um, there is no takeaway that NFL did what they felt was necessary. The fallout was, you know, two weeks ago, 33 fines, over $730,000 worth of fine, fine both teams. Um, you know, that's it. I expect the Steelers to come into this game focused, ready to, you know, proceed to keep that, that sixth seed. Uh, you know, they bench uh, Rudolph, obviously, because, you know, if you go back to that game in Cleveland, he was obviously their best player with four interceptions. So. Mm -hmm. Um, they did, you know, they did what was right. necessary to, to help advance that. And when Pittsburgh plays at home, it's a totally different animal. I believe their last loss was to uh, Baltimore, and that was in overtime. Mm -hmm. Action Jackson, they picked him off three times. They did. The whole the whole team, it was what 277 total yards, you know, for that whole game. So I expect the Steelers to go in there focused on what they need to do. The guys that were really, you know, truly involved in this incident. Uh, Pouncey, he's not going to play. Uh, Rudolph, Garrett. he's not going Rudolph. to play because they benched him. And Garrett won't even be at the game. So the focus is going in there, winning this game, proceeding on to, you know, continue to hold that six seed. So what did you hear from Steelers you know about Miles Garrett's allegation of the N-word? The allegation of the N-word, I'm told, is, a, is an absolute false tale. Um, for me, hearing that from them and knowing them, I believe them. And when I think of that, it makes me think that you didn't hear nothing of this until he actually had his hearing. Yep. So I believe he may have gotten to his hearing and said, I'm trying to lessen what I did and have a reason for it and said, you know what? He called me the N-word. And now maybe he didn't expect that to get pushed all the way out, but now yep. it's out there. And now you're stuck with having to deal with this. With all the mics that they have on guys, cameras, you know, uh, microphones pointed, I don't see why they wouldn't be able to find out if this is true mm -hmm. right. or false. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about it that okay, way. Okay, so what's the ultimate punishment for Miles Garrett? What do you think? For me, I believe he's out the rest of the season. I think next year they're going to proceed, give him another four, maybe six games. Whew, next year? Wow. Yes, Whew. yes. I'm going to make an example of you because I don't want anybody else to ever think that they can ever do this in a, in a football game or a stadium in the NFL ever again. And are you, I have would you to be make, good with that? I would. Wow. Because you've never seen anything like that. I've never this. seen anything like that. And every time you I see the video, about this, I if can, you I'm take, like, oh. like he ripped his helmet off, so yep. he had the front end. If he had hooked his hand underneath and came over the top, he could have literally killed that man. I'm so like, surprised it didn't crack his head open. Like, well, you used it. He got the back, the back end of the soft of end of the helmet. There's some so, He didn't get it with the top. Yeah. He didn't get it with the crown. He got him with the back end of the helmet, the most flexible part of the helmet. Yeah. And he that's still, really what saved. still got him oh, good. Yeah. He Every got time him good. you see it, Ooh. it does. You can see the, 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 the cringe in the face. Uh, you know, that's uh, like that boxer that take that hit here yeah, and his whole side of his face yep. get readjusted. Yep, <laughs> readjusted. Yeah. <laughs> So what do you think about four to six games next year? Well, I, I, I said, Skip, at the original, I said I would be surprised if he does if this doesn't bleed into next year. Um, I would think it's somewhere around two to four. I don't know about four. To, yeah, they might be four to six. But uh, they, they, I've been hearing sources say they hope 
What do you mean you hope my Garrett does this suspension doesn't bleed in the next year? You control that. I mean, obviously you send him to counseling and what? He says, I, I've learned my lesson. I'm sorry. They're going to have to have him back to New York for right. another session right. to see mm -hmm. if he's contrite right. or whatever. Right. I don't know. So it's going to be very interesting. But I would be surprised, Skip, if it's not at least a game or two bleeding into next year because I agree with James, and I've said this. Punishment is not only about the offender. It's about to deter others from doing such sad acts. Mm -hmm. And they want to send the strongest, mm -hmm. harshest message they possibly can to let you know. We've seen this before. The message that they sent to another guy that did something that the NFL did not like and did not want to see happen mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. The guy still isn't playing. That is true. For I, me, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I said the day after, I said the rest of this year and one game next year just as a message game to your point. Listen, the NFL PA is going to fight like crazy if they go more than one game. They might even fight the one oh, game. Oh, yeah, they fight all they want to. Yeah. This is something that right. you have never seen. This is unprecedented. Like, what could have been yep. versus what actually happened, like premeditated versus mm -hmm. actually getting the job done. That is true. So how fortuitous is it that Mason Rudolph won't be playing in this game? Do you think that helps sort of – you know, deflate the tension. It, does, a it, bit. it doesn't. It doesn't deflate or add any tension to it. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, the Steelers are past this. They're focused yeah. on what they need to do to advance into the postseason. This Mason plan or not plan is a great thing for them right now because he is not going to be there to, like uh, you say, kill them. Yeah, yeah. You know, so they have duck plan. They're they're going to go with him. He did a he did a, a effective job last week. He did. They By the actually, way, Devlin Hodges is an undrafted rookie out of Samford. Not Stanford, Samford. Yeah. Samford. Yeah, nicknamed <laughs> Duck. Duck. <laughs> and, but he doesn't throw any ducks that I can no. see. No. Ah. Oh. And, and for me, I don't believe Coach Tomlin made this decision like, oh, man, this might reoccur again if I put – no, he, this is a decision based on play. Yes. If you look at Mason Rudolph, the way he played in that game yep. and the way he was playing last week in Cincinnati – he left Coach Tomlin no choice. And you can't tell me he wasn't somehow distracted by all the fallout of it. Yeah. That it didn't take something out of him psychologically. And plus, Skip, I'm in the sixth seed. I got an opportunity. To make, as bad as we played, uh, everything that's going mm -hmm. wrong, we lost our quarterback like second mm -hmm. week of the season, I still have an opportunity to make the playoffs. I'm putting the best 11 on offense, the best 11 on defense, and I'm going out there to try to, to maintain that. Mm -hmm. Because, Skip, you also, I've traded a first-round pick to get Minka Fitzpatrick. Now, I ain't trying to be really trying to be picking in the top ten. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make that pick as low as I possibly can for the Dolphins. Question. Yep. So, and I got a chance, and Mason Rudolph, what, whatever transpired, bro, you were awful against Cleveland, and you carried that right into Cincinnati. You, you were awful. So, Coach, Coach Tomlin had no choice yep. but to go this route. No, hmm. I agree. So, Cleveland is a two-and-a-half-point favorite in what is a pivotal game for, for both, sure these two, oh, yeah. both teams. Mm -hmm. This is just me. I liked what I saw of Cleveland, albeit against Miami, but they started to feel like they were figuring it out. Mm -hmm. what, what's your gut on Cleveland? I'm, I'm not buying into Cleveland. Yep. I'm not. It's, it's the Dolphins. Yep. <laughs> Come on. They've won three straight, though. They mm -hmm. won three straight against the Steelers. He threw four picks. He's, yeah. he, come on. Actually, the best player for them was the quarterback for the Steelers. Mm. So, before that, what was it? Uh, Buffalo, mm -hmm. they just surprised them. They really, you know, they, they got out and actually – Got They're just starting to look a little bit like what a lot of people thought they would look yeah. like from the start. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so. if, if Cleveland let look, you can't protect Mason Rudolph because the quarterback, he's the quarterback. If I can't get him, I'm going to get somebody. Get the guy to play in that position. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, oh I'm, if I'm Cleveland, I'm playing physical. I ain't going to do anything dirty. Right. But you talk about physicality? Yep. Woo! Mm -hmm. Steelers, y'all ain't never seen physicality mm -hmm. like this. Hmm. So you like Pittsburgh in this game? Of course, they're at home. You, at you home? see how they play at home. You like Pittsburgh? Yeah. I like No, I'm going to take Cleveland. No, 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 oh, no, no, well, no, no, will you no, just no, switch? No, 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 no. Skip Duck. Huh? Duck, you going to take a guy named Duck? Okay. They're going to run the ball. The last great Duck I know was the five heartbeats. You remember Duck? Listen, I'm going to tell you right now. Duck is going to go out there and duck, duck, goose all over them boys. Duck, duck, goose. Okay. All right, Baker. Oh, shake it, bake. I think it might be a little bit more of duck. TJ and Bud Dupree go go ahead and smack. Listen, come on The offensive line is not like that. The Cleveland offensive line is terrible. Okay. They're terrible. Cam, 
Just go bull okay, to shit straight back. I'm taking, I'm taking get it, You better get I'm over here. I'm yeah. taking Pittsburgh. Yeah. <laughs> You've been convinced. I'm okay. taking Pittsburgh. Duck, duck, goose. Mm. I, we used to say duck, duck, gray duck in Minnesota. You always said duck, mm. duck, goose. Duck, duck, goose. I yeah, think that's duck, a Minnesota duck, thing. thing. I don't know yeah, why. I've never heard of that. that. Never heard that? Minnesota? Oh, oh yeah. Duck, duck, gray goose? Duck, duck, gray goose. Oh, great. Duck, duck, like, gray the drink? like the duck, drink? Duck, 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 gray duck. Oh, oh no, no, I ain't never heard no? of that. Okay, I'm going to have to check with my sources because yeah, I've been told something that. wrong my whole life, James. Appreciate you being here. Yeah. Happy early Thanksgiving for you. Thank you. Are we being fooled by Tom Brady's unimpressive stats this season? Mm. Uh, Rob Parker is here. He has a lot to say. Nice. Yep. No mercy. Tom Brady looked less than spectacular in the Patriots' 13-9 win over the Cowboys. The 42-year-old quarterback, I almost said 32, I don't know where that came up from, the 42-year-old QB completed, that's what I mean, less than 50% of his passes and failed to reach 200 yards. But one anonymous NFL executive told the Athletic, quote, don't be fooled by Brady's struggles and that Brady is still completely deadly. 42 years old. Mm. Just want to remind everyone of that. Joining us now, Fox Sports contributor, Rob mm. Parker. What is your reaction to this one, Rob? Completely deadly. Thank you. <laughs> good morning. Yeah, and good I'm not morning. buying that. <laughs> that NFL executive, this is the they, – they, they love to do the lifetime achievement when it comes to Tom Brady. They want to give him mad respect. They want to act like this is going to be last year where maybe he didn't play that well – during the end of the season, and then all of a sudden the playoffs come around and he wins. But if we want to be real about even last year in the playoffs, Shannon and Skip, he didn't have this monster playoff. Two In the three playoff games, including the Super Bowl, two touchdowns, three picks. That's all he had. He also only had, he had zero touchdowns in the Super Bowl. And let's go back. He's had, when you look at the last 12 games, Seven of the last 12 games, he's had one touchdown or less. He's had four games with no touchdowns, if you include the Super Bowl and the 11 games this year. So for him to say that Tom Brady is playing possum and he still got it, he doesn't have Gronk, he doesn't have Josh Gordon, he doesn't have Antonio Brown, who he had for Keep going. a hot Come minute. Keep going. Right? He doesn't have any of those guys. Last year, finished in the top 10. Skip, you love the QBR and QBR. This year, 14. Mm. Go look at uh, completion. Last year, 18th, which wasn't that great. This year, 24th. Mm. So all the numbers that are coming in mm. signal a change in Tom Brady. Mm. So for this executive to act like Tom Brady, oh, he's still lethal and, and don't buy into what's going on. Tom is playing a little game. He's going to act like he's struggling, and then yeah. all of a sudden light it up, that guy is totally off base and should resign as uh, GM of the uh, Lions. He must be the GM <laughs> of the Lions because who else would be saying this? <laughs> you know, so I'm going to get this right. Check me, follow me here, Rob. So Tom Brady is struggling because that's what he's saying. Don't be, don't be alarmed by Tom Brady's struggle. So he's actually struggling. So someone said that out loud, Jenny. Hmm. So Shannon ain't making it up. I'm not a hater. Someone else said that when I've been saying. You are a hater. <laughs> but you are you're overwhelmed by the hate of this man. Who, next me? Week. This is yep. real hate. This is <laughs> yeah. pretty big Skip, hate. I've tried to tell you this as a player that once played, and I'm never going to tell anybody or try to make people believe I was as great as Tom Brady because I wasn't. But I was a pretty good player. You're a Hall of Famer. The thing that happened to me as I started to get older I couldn't summon those great performances like I could in my prime. Mm. Could I have a big game? Yeah. In year, in year 13, I went for 214 in a game. Mm. I had three. In, in, in year 14, I had three. I had a game in which I had three touchdowns and went over 100 yards. Mm. So I could have a game here or there, Rob. But the consistency of putting those games back to back to back, I couldn't do it. And see what we see with Tom? Yeah, he can have a drive. Yeah, he could have a quarter, but the consistency of playing like that for the entirety of the game is no longer their skip. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen, yeah, early on last year, he played well. He struggled down the stretch, but you're like, okay. But now you're seeing it for a drive. You might see it for a quarter. Where's the consistency mm -hmm. throughout the entirety of the game? We don't mm -hmm. see that with Tom, mm -hmm. and it's okay. Skip mm -hmm. all the time. 
Mm. Man, that joker got a record that's unbelievable. That man, they keep talking about all these. Uh, he's unbeaten, and once he gets a title, undefeated. No, oh, un he like seventeen million and oh, because <laughs> mm. he's un he's unrelenting, Skip. Mm. You know what? Because he has a he got as much Gatorade and as call as many timeouts as he want. Because just when you think you got it, Nick. Oh, oh my, oh my elbow hurt a little mm. bit. Oh, oh my elbow. knee, my back, mm. my knee and my back. <laughs> no, Skip. How's your back? <laughs> Great. <laughs> no father time around here? No, it's not. He's going to do it to both Stop of you it. again. Stop it. Thank you. You're going to have to eat so many words. It just keeps happening over and over. We have Tom Brady Groundhog Day on Undisputed year after year after year. The Hall of Famer said he's done in 2016. He's done in 2017. Rob's saying he was done in 2014. <laughs> At least I'm consistent. Right? Yeah. Yep. You haven't given and up. He still is not done. Tom Brady is 10 and 1. And the defense, according to the Hall of Famer, has been overrated all year. No, 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 that's, that's not what I said. That's what you said. That's not what they I said. played nobody they, when they played well, they somebody. Played they have, Nick Chubb ran wild on them, and then the Ravens ran wilder yes. on that defense. Mm -hmm. It's way overrated. Tom Brady has been doing it with mirrors. Tom Brady has been throwing to the immortal Gunnar Osheski and the immortal Jacoby Myers. These are undrafted free agents. And the immortal Matt Lacoste at tight end in place of Rob Gronkowski. Do they have, ha do they have helmets the, and uniforms? They, they have no? little to no running game this year because I don't know Why what do you happened running to running game? You got Tom Brady. Okay, but he has little to no. And until this past Sunday, he had no left tackle. So the offensive line was all-time leaky. In 20 years, he has had the worst protection this year of his all 20 years. And he's still afloat because he still leads the whole league in completions. He leads the whole league in what are called or deemed catchable passes. And he's tied for second in what are termed big pass plays. And he made a couple of big-time clutch moment throws against my Dallas Cowboys on Sunday that were vintage Tom Brady. The first throw to Nikhil Harry for the touchdown, he's just Brady-esque. Yeah. It's just, here he is again. Throw. Watch this. Skip it. You can have Whammo. it. Whammo. Perfect outside shoulder throw. It's, shoulder it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's perfect. And, and then how about the later throw on third and long to Julian Edelman against quote-unquote double coverage? <laughs> I, I don't even know what they're doing. Exactly. Yeah, here we go. This is Jordan Lewis and Xavier Woods. Look at this. Woo. Uh, that, that looked like a pretty mobile, athletic quarterback to me. Was that I don't a knuckle know. ball? Yeah. I saw a yeah. little flutter Let's on get, that. Here's the thing. Also, as we start to get older, and the guy mentioned it, he mentioned about who he didn't have. You see, when Tom Brady was great, we didn't worry about who he had. No, he would get credit. Now, as you get older, you need more and more help but, but to do what you normally could do when you didn't need those guys. He used to get, get, he used to get credit, and the, the whole narrative about Tom Brady was he did more with less. Yeah. And now, all of a sudden, he needs. that's his crutch. You can't have it both <laughs> ways, Skip. So the irony he used of to this say he'd make anybody is, great. What quarterback do you and you love the most? Aaron Rodgers, who has become a declining, overrated myth, and you both continue to defend him. He better than and he's he better than a Brady once right always has been better than Brady. Statistically across the board, Tom Brady's had a better year let than me, Aaron me, Rodgers. No, 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 he's not. Let me ask you a question, Skip Bayless. If I were to say, okay, I'm gonna put Aaron Rodgers in with with the same defense in New England, and I'm gonna take Tom Brady and I'm gonna put him in Green Bay, are the records different? Oh yeah, Green Bay would be unbeatable. What? Stop it. Hey, do, do you guys, have you been watching Aaron Rodgers? Did you watch what happened at San Francisco? Did you watch what happened against the Chargers? Did you watch him when it's, he had the five touchdowns and he ran in one first time any quarterback did that since 1991? Oh. Mark Rippon. That's did, how long it's been. Did you watch the I last watched that play game. of did a you home watch game? That one? Did you watch the last play of a home game Aaron Rodgers lost to the Beagles? The Beagles at, at Lambeau. Last play of the game, he fails uh, to see a wide open receiver in the corner of the end zone. I watched your guy. I watched your guy beat the Beagles, mm. but he didn't throw a touchdown mm. pass. Julian Edelman did. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he should play quarterback. That That's a good. Point. How about it? Who yeah. won that game? No, see, mm. it's always about that. Well, but no. Brady, look at Brady's stats: yeah. four games. Yeah. 
No, it, no touchdowns. The Super Bowl, Tom Brady no was touchdowns. So, zero. so upset after the game by lack of weapons and lack of protection. Because remember, he had some no-name guy in his seventh team at left tackle for that whole game. Name, Marshall yeah. Newhouse. Marshall <laughs> Newhouse is there, and God his bless family him. knows his name. Yeah. Okay, so Marshall Newhouse is, <laughs> is attempting, and and Don, uh, Tom Brady has to exit stage right. They're calling rollouts right for Tom Brady because he has no protection from his left tackle. You see. Everything has to be perfect. Yeah, he start he's starting to sound like a little Dak because mm. you know when everything's perfect, the offensive line hold up. Mm. Zeke run for one fifty. The oh. offensive line is great. Dak can be good. Oh, I'm starting to see that with Tom Brady. Highest degree of difficulty of his whole career has been this year in their ten and one because they Woo. beat defense. At, he's going along for a great ride. Oh. He's riding a great car. Coach Belichick has got this car mm. nobody's ever seen before. The overrated defense says Shannon Sharp. Little discount. Yep, that's what you told we me. We know the offense is uh, uh, over. It's mm. not rate. Shouldn't be X rated. Mm. Because they do jack. Mm. That's how bad it's been. Yeah, X-rated. Mm. Okay. Boy, he sure did enough to beat my team. That ain't saying much. All yeah. right. What about the Jets? Right. Well, the Jets beat your team. That's right. Mm. The We're going to have team. Rob stick around for this next one because it is the 10-year anniversary of Tiger Woods, Oof, yeah. the infamous car Oof. crash, and there Oof. are some things we need to talk about. That's next. No mercy. Today marks the 10-year anniversary of Tiger Woods driving his Cadillac into a fire hydrant at the end of his driveway on Thanksgiving, and eventually it would come out. The crash resulted from Tiger's wife at the time finding out, out about his multiple affairs, and we all remember everything there. But the fallout from the incident included most of Tiger's major sponsors dropping him and his reputation really taking a huge hit. Rob Parker still with us, but Shannon, I'm going to start with you. How do you feel about this 10 years later? Um, I still view Tiger the same way I viewed him before this and I viewed him after this, Skip. I think sometimes people get caught up and they think of a professional athlete or an entertainer celebrity mm -hmm. that all of a sudden they escape human problems. Yep. These are human. They have, you know, affairs and infidelity. They have substance abuse. They have mental issues. They deal with the gamut of emotions just like a, a person that's not a celebrity, that's not famous, that doesn't make a large sum of money. Um, I didn't get all up. Like, I can't believe Tiger did that. They make it seem like Tiger was an, an evangelist, like he was a, 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 a pastor or a Catholic priest or something, Skip. Mm -hmm. he, was a, he was a golfer, a damn good one. But he was human. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I guess people thought that, well, you got all this money, you got a beautiful wife, all the problems that would normally befall upon a, a, a person that's not in that position all of a sudden wouldn't afflict you. Mm. No, nobody gets, guy, gets eyeballs to a television during a golfing event like Tiger Woods. Mm. Nobody gets people to the course when ti like Tiger Woods. There'll never be another Tiger Woods, Skip. But I didn't get, I mean, look, the, uh, I think Nike was the was his only sponsor that stayed with him. Yep. So he still generates the uh, the public consumption. He's not the endorsement behemoth that he once was. Because as Jenny read, a lot of them, you know, they went away. They and, did. And didn't and didn't Nike even give up golf, like selling golf they stuff for the most part? Right. They, yeah. Mm -hmm. They did. Um, they, yeah. Even they, they kept. They don't. Yeah. Well, they they do apparel. Right. They don't do irons, irons and, and golf balls like and that. things right. of that nature. Yep. But Skip, for me, yeah. I, I look at Tiger the exact same way. A lot of people like, I cannot believe Tiger did this. And we know why. We know the crooks of this or why people fell out with Tiger Woods. Because I can assure you, in the hundred, how long they've been playing professional sports, Skip, Tiger Woods is not the first athlete to have had an affair. He's not the first to have had multiple affairs. Mm -hmm. But he might be the first one that had a wife of the opposite race mm. and how it was viewed, I can't believe. So we know what that is, that was about. But for me, he's still Tiger. I still watch him. That's really the only time that I'm going to watch a golfing event if Tiger's playing. Yep. He's not playing, Skip. Click. I hear you. Go ahead. I, I, I don't think Tiger's ever recovered fully. And I hear what you're saying. I don't think people expected him to be perfect. But his image that was painted out there for people that people. Who painted that? You? No, yeah. I'm just saying, like, in general. I don't know if it's his. People, it was Nike, people. or they, whatever. They, it was, they it promoted was, him this it was way. promoted yeah. as this, they this wholesome guy. Like the perfect the husband, perfect husband and father. Kids. You know yeah. what? And when yeah. you bring your kids out and you do all that stuff, yep. people look at it, and I, and I do believe. And then the details, Shannon. It's one thing if somebody steps out and, mm -hmm. and maybe they have an issue in right. them and then why. The details are so salacious mm -hmm. and so out there. 
restaurants and the mm-hmm. parking well, lots. This no, I'm wasn't just one affair. Well, it was, it, it was, it was, was just what Rob, you talking about? Like he went to the bunny farm no, out in Vegas. I'm, I'm just, but it was. It was. Uh, it was just. I'm just were saying. In a lot of ways. This was far more than I could have ever imagined Tiger Woods being involved in. Mm-hmm. For me personally, everybody's different. So he's never recovered that image that I remember. No. Will never. When I look at Tiger Woods, I don't look at him the same way. And he has other things that I don't have the same. Mm-hmm. I, I've told this story a million times. I was so captivated by him. I'm in Japan on my honeymoon yep. with my wife, and I'm watching him win the Masters. Mm-hmm. I was all in, Shannon. Yeah. I'm not all in now. And and you know what? When he's in the hunt, I used to watch, and I don't watch golf all the time. Mm-hmm. But when he, I used to watch. Right. I don't watch all the time, even when he's involved, unless. Someone says, mm-hmm. turn the TV on, he's Tiger in the Woods. hunt. You know what I mean, or something. That's the only mm-hmm. time I'm really engaged now. So when I look at Tiger Woods, I look at a guy who was nearly perfect, had everything lined up, who was going to go down as the greatest athlete who ever played any sport in this country. That's where he was headed, who was derailed by infidelity and other situations. And now I look at him, and I, and I just don't feel the same about Tiger Woods. Mm. You both make strong points. To yours first. In covering sports as long as we have, you've been around them. I mean, it's almost like who doesn't cheat on wives? Mm-hmm. You know, who, well, who? Not everyone. I know, but it gets that way. <laughs> it starts to feel that way. So, is there shock? No, there's no shock there. Right. But to your point, it was such serial cheating. When we knew nothing about any cheating, we thought he was the perfect husband and father according to his website and all the promotion that all of his sponsors pushed. They they were selling him as the perfect husband and and father. father. Husband and father. Right. And the details were so salacious that it, it even came out that he cheated on her in her house and I think in her bedroom, as I recall. It's just so out of control that... There was, I can only speak for my little inner circle of people, and obviously they're in my family. It's, right. We're all white people, mm-hmm. but nobody cared about the white wife. They just cared about the betrayal of, God, we, we trusted him, and he betrayed us. No, he's really just being who he was. His father had a reputation for being the same way. Mm-hmm. But in the end, it, it was the, 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 the whole the shock value of he's a fraud. The husband parts, it's, it's fraudulent. Mm-hmm. And yet, I, I quickly, I, I just go on with that. It's like, okay, he's human. So, oh, yeah. s- no, we stop get, the presses, yeah. he's human, right? Yeah. So, I didn't care about that I, I, as far as, am I going to watch? Yes, I'm going to be on the edge of my seat still. But I'm with Rob about it psychologically derailed his whole career. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it shook him to his foundation. Yeah. He had to go to sex rehab. He had to do a big press conference. He had to do a mea culpa. Yes, I yeah, cheated. He yeah. went to say, Tiger was a freak. Right. Yeah. He don't need no rehab for that. Right. But he did. He did. And it was a big story that he went somewhere in Mississippi to yeah. some rehab center. And we saw pictures of him lurking outside. You know, like, <laughs> with the what? hoodie I don't on. Know, like with the hoodie on. Okay. <laughs> but the point is, when this happened... Four times or ten years ago, he had 14 major mm. championships. He now incredibly has 15, and the one that he won was the all-timer. Like I didn't see it coming. I still can't believe he won right. the Masters. Yes, it was sensational, and I do believe he's, in my eyes, he's redeemed himself as a human uh, uh, hugely. He he seems to be a really good guy now. Yeah. He used to be a, a tough guy to get to know. Mm-hmm. He was difficult with his competitors and with the media, and he's become a very likable Tiger Woods. He, he, he got knocked off his he did. perch, yeah. And, yeah. and he has changed. I agree with that. But, but that the other thing, too, Shannon, you know, it's one thing when you hear somebody's doing something and when people pull back the covers and right. read all that, and then that, that voicemail that he left his mistress that – plays on every sports radio, hello, this is Tiger, you know, and he's yeah. basically telling her that the phone call, that the wife was probably going to be calling yeah, her. Yeah. Can't get that out of my head. Right, and then the, the image in your head of Tiger was had taken an Ambien, so he's, he's like dozing off, and, and his neighbors had to come out after the car crash and put a pillow under his head, and he's, he's fallen asleep in the street mm-hmm. after she has taken a golf club and knocked out both back seat windows. Can you try to get away? Club. I know. I got it. But it's just a shocking vision in your head, right? It just, 
I, I, for, I, I guess it's just me, because I guess I haven't been an athlete and how I perceive athletes. I don't look at them I know, I got as it. the moral compass of how I no, can live no, my no, life. No. And a lot of people do. No, I got it. Well, they come back of the ages. You know, no one's perfect, and he's come a long way. He has. I that know. we can all agree. I've been roaring. Yeah. Hey, happy Thanksgiving to you, Rob, yeah, thank you. Have us. a great trip. You. We'll be uh, mm. looking forward oh, to hearing some going. reports. What? Guys. <laughs> you don't want me to go? Be safe. Yeah, go. Be safe. I'll bring your reports here. Do we yeah, now have safe. proof that Lamar Jackson is the fastest QB ever? <laughs> that is next. Ooh. No mercy. Time for our final topic of the day. Lamar Jackson will have a speed rating of 96 in the newest Madden update. This is significant because it will make him the fastest QB ever in the video mm. game, surpassing our friend Michael Vick's rating of 95. So, mm. Shannon, what does this tell you? Well, I, I think Lamar deserves to have the higher rating. I mean, only a... Four guys are high. Tyreek Hill has a 99. Marquise Goodman has 98. Hollywood Brown, 97. And John Ross wow. has a 97. Mm -hmm. So it just goes to show you what people think of what they think of Michael Vick. I mean, Michael Vick. Mm -hmm. uh, Lamar Jackson's speed. Mm -hmm. I actually think, I still don't know. It's hard for me to imagine that Lamar Jackson could outrun Michael Vick. In really? The line. Yeah. Well, even Michael said on our show he thinks that Lamar's a little faster. No. No? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm, interesting. Mm -mm. So I don't care about the speed as much as I do the QB rating on Madden. Yeah. Because What's Lamar, Lamar started the season the 24th ranked quarterback, and at least they've gradually the, upped up him to seven. He's now the okay. seventh ranked. And you know what? I think he should be vying for the top spot, at least the top couple of spots. Right? I, mean, that's, I mean, 96, that's pretty good, though, Skip. I mean, um, uh, Miko Hartman also has a 96, and we on, know he can On speed. On speed. Yeah. So no, we, like and we know he can run. Yeah. But for Lamar Jackson, it's just unbelievable to see the transformation this guy's going through in yeah, less than a year. It is. We are watching it. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Box, sports, one of one. one.